Lost Trails, Book 9 of the Montana Trail Series, A Clearwater County Romance. By Bonnie R. Paulson. She refuses to believe in love. He's never wanted anything so bad. Hannah can't believe she's lost so much in her short life. First, losing her parents, then her sister, in law who she was close to, and then finally her brother broke any dreams Hannah had of ever finding happiness. Watching as each member of the Montana Trails found happy, ever, after, at first made her want to find it, too. She looked. She tried. But no matter what she did, man after man passed her by over the years. Maybe they sensed she didn't really believe in love. No matter. Hannah is convinced there's no one out there for her. So, she decides to make plans for her future that don't involve a man, or anyone else. Until Xander enters the picture. What Hannah doesn't know is that Xander knows Nate, the oldest Montana Trail cousin. A regular at the local watering hold on the east side of Montana. Multiple drunken nights and an affinity for listening earned Xander the rare opportunity to hear about the trails and the intrepid Hannah. The stories of her persistence with regards to searching for Nate impressed Xander. Tales of the large Montana Trails family warmed something inside his heart. He knows Hannah and the family are meant to be his. He has to take a chance to meet Nate's littlest sister. A woman like that. She is worth more than any ranch, any land, any gold. He puts everything on the line to claim her, even her trust. Will he be able to win her heart? Or will they continue to live life without any chance of finding what they're searching for? Are they destined to be lost forever? Chapter 1 Hannah Life at Bella Acres had changed drastically over the years. Even in the early morning light, changes across the barn and other outbuildings were easily seen. Pausing mid, step on her way to the garden, Hannah glanced over her shoulder at the large rancher with its updated exterior, remodeled deck, newly painted trim and shutters. Since Drake and Stephanie had purchased the house, land, and ranch from Nate's bankrupt hands, they'd refurbished so many things and returned the house to its former glory and beyond. None of that could be considered a small feat considering the dilapidated conditions the home had been in. When Emma's health worsened, the home had fallen into a sickened state as if the home itself had contracted whatever illness Emma had died from. Was there a way for homes to absorb the loss of a loved one? There wasn't much Nate could do for the ranch, even when Emma was alive, since he was gone trying to make money as a ranch hand just to pay the basic necessities. All of that didn't matter. Not now. The home had found a splendor unlike any Hannah could ever remember. When her parents had been alive, the home had been warm and welcoming, but still simple in its elegance. Stephanie and Drake had reclaimed many of the pieces Nate had sold to neighbors to keep food on his sister's plates. They'd upgraded many features and built upon the foundation to enhance the terrific parts of Bella Acres that gave the ranch its name. Some days Hannah felt like Stephanie was trying to compete with Nate and their parents. Other days. It felt like her sister was trying to restore some of the memories from when everyone lived under one roof. Focusing on the past wasn't the best way for Hannah to move on, to grieve. But who was she grieving at this point? Who was she missing? Mom? Dad? They died so long ago, it barely hurt anymore. Emma? She'd become the big sister both Stephanie and Hannah needed. And then. Nate. Maybe Hannah grieved him the most. He hadn't died. But sometimes, she couldn't help thinking it would be easier, if he had. At least, if he'd died, she wouldn't wonder where he was, wonder what he was doing, wonder if he was safe. The worst part about grieving Nate's absence was the fact that he chose to leave. He chose to be gone. He hadn't been taken from her. He'd removed himself. Hannah sighed, turning back toward her garden. Her garden. Not Emma's anymore. Stephanie wasn't interested in growing things. She loved design and style and writing with the men. Cooking, gardening, and canning were so far out of Stephanie's scope of interest Hannah often found herself doubting they were sisters. Brushing aside a dew, spotted spider web glistening in the early morning light, Hannah enjoyed the quiet of the morning. Her feet rustled across the longer grass she refused to let Drake cut. Everything about that garden spoke to her soul. She could find a modicum of peace there in the boundaries laid out around her. She could breathe. Her garden gate was old and rotten in parts. No matter how many times Drake offered to put in a new fence, Hannah wouldn't have it. 
Her father had built that fence with lodge pole pine from the back part of their property before he'd had it selectively forested. He'd been so excited to create the garden area for Hannah's mom and there was no way Hannah would let it get torn down. She couldn't lose that part of them. Living on a ranch, Hannah would have expected to smell evidence of the animals in the barns instead of the fragrant lilac bushes bordering the garden and along the outside of the chicken coop. She sniffed appreciatively, letting the scent anchor her in the peace of the morning. The rickety gate creaked as Hannah pushed it open. She shoved her bucket ahead of her through the slight opening. The gate didn't open all the way. Between rusted hinges and an overgrown lovage plant, the gate wouldn't open enough for more than an effort to squeeze through. Yet Hannah wouldn't trade it for anything. Settling the bucket into the groove of her waist just above her hip, Hannah deftly picked at the large red berries. She'd been neglecting them the last couple days and they were going to make her work for it that morning. She glanced down the tall row of sagging raspberry bushes, smiling wryly, and whispered, Oh, Emma, look at what we made. Hannah jerked her gaze back to the berries at hand and blinked away tears that seemed to be so close to the surface lately. She'd started the garden with its plentiful berries with Emma as a way to boost their non-existent income. When Emma's disease had worsened, everything had fallen to Hannah. After Drake and Stephanie took over and Nate left, Hannah could have stopped the small business, but it was the only thing which was solely hers. She couldn't let it go. Plus, it tied her to Emma and she needed the connection so much more than she wanted to admit. From behind her the gate squeaked, announcing the arrival of someone new. Hannah swiveled to glance behind her and grinned, pausing to watch her brother, in, law, Drake, try to maneuver his large muscular frame through the tiny opening. After extricating himself from all of the clothing snags on various items poking out, Drake glared back at the gate and then turned to Hannah, surprised to find her watching him. He jerked his thumb toward the gate. You really need to let me refurbish that. You mean tear it down. No, thank you. Her smile remained as she turned back to the berries, picking them as fast as she could and dropping them into the bucket. A solid thunk followed each time a berry fell to the plastic bottom. In seconds, the sound disappeared as the first layer filled and the berries landed on other berries. Drake crossed the faded bark, covered ground his boots making the sounds of whispers as he walked. He stopped at the end of the row, just feet from Hannah, and reached out to pick a handful of berries and pop them in his mouth. A few moments passed in comfortable silence while Drake watched her. Then he spoke, his congenial tone a testament to their brother-sister relationship. You've got a lot of work to do out here, squirt. Need any help? Hannah scrunched her lips to the side and wrinkled her nose. You don't have time to do it. You have new hires you need to deal with. Thanks for the offer. She'd watched the influx of trucks pull in and park at the back of the barn all week. Pausing in her berry picking wasn't an option, even as she talked with Drake. She plowed forward, continuing to pick, ducking at intervals to grab the ones hiding under the leaves. The sneaky hiding ones were usually the sweetest. Are you still interested in doing the jams, jellies, and preserves? Stephanie mentioned you talked about getting beehives for a while, but then dropped it. Drake picked more berries, ambling along as she moved down the line. Um, well, I just, what did she say to that? Right then wasn't the time to share her hopes and dreams, not without Stephanie. Her sister deserved to know at the same time as Drake, if not before. Stephanie also said you've been asking her if she wants to take over the business. You know she hates cooking unless you're telling her exactly what to do. What's going on? Are you ready to give up doing all this for good? Drake motioned his hands over the expanse of the garden and quirked his eyebrows at her. His easy smile made talking to him like less of a burden and she liked the comfortable parts in their relationship. Even as much as she trusted him and adored him, she could never tell him that she was trying to leave. She had dreams and wishes. Nothing was going to be the same for her since Nate left. She would never be able to be completely happy there at Bella Acres or anywhere near Taylor Falls. No matter how much she loved her family. She didn't answer his questions directly. Instead, she cocked a sad smile his way and avoided his gaze. You know, it's almost painful how much you remind me of Nate. Her oldest brother had the same steady strength about him and he'd been supportive of any dreams she'd come up with. The easy way they'd been around each other had been something she missed and greatly enjoyed when she found it with Drake. Drake lowered his voice, all humor draining from his face. Hannah, he's not dead. 
Hannah couldn't shake the anger that was always present. It simmered inside her, ready to mount to a boiling intensity at the drop of a hat. The bucket slipped from her fingers, the clatter of the handle hitting the plastic side loud as she groaned. Bending, she scooped the bucket from the ground, leaving the few berries there that had fallen out. After a few moments of silence, she blinked back her angry tears and murmured, He might as well be. I understand you feel that way, but I want you to remember something. As long as Nate is alive, he has the ability to come home. One day, he'll change his mind. At one point, he'll finish grieving and then he'll be ready to come back to us. We need to be ready to forgive him and welcome him home. He's important to us and, like it or not, he's making choices that help him. We have to respect that. Drake popped more berries in his mouth and fell silent as if he knew his words and needed time to sink in. I just wish he hadn't left. I miss him. Hannah sniffed. She wouldn't cry. No matter what. Nate wasn't going to take her pride or dignity. Not anymore. Another moment dragged on between them where Drake didn't correct her or argue with the logic of her statement. Nate had abandoned them all after Emma had died. While the Montana Trail's cousins' lives had gone on, empty without their brother and cousin, they'd been forced to move on and find love while a huge part of them was missing. Hannah arched her eyebrow at the next handful of berries. What wasn't Drake saying? Did he suspect that Hannah had plans? She didn't want to talk about them. Not yet. Not when someone could still try to dampen her excitement. Drake changed the subject. So, yeah, you saw we got another batch of hands which is why I came out to bug you. Um, Cookie's gone for the weekend, last minute trip because his sister found out she has breast cancer and she wanted a quick family reunion. So, well, he won't be back until Monday, Drake lifted his eyebrows and narrowed his eyes. Hannah stopped picking the berries and looked at Drake with the innocence of a doe in her gaze. Oh, wow, that's awful. She knew what he was trying to ask but she was definitely going to make him work for it. Studying her face, he pressed his lips together. You're going to make me work for it, aren't you? She laughed at his exact use of the phrase she'd been thinking. Yep. She inclined her head and adjusted the bucket on her hip, waiting for him to continue. He sighed and adjusted his wide-brimmed hat. All right, brat, can you help us out? Stephanie said she'd do it but the last time she made chili the men were sick for a couple days. She's not as good in the kitchen as you. Can you run it and she'll help? I don't want to tell her no, but I also don't want to hospitalize the new guys. We don't need that kind of reputation here at Bella Acres. Hannah would laugh at his reasoning, if it wasn't as close to truth as gospel. Stephanie wasn't good in the kitchen and the last time really had caused food poisoning. Cooking for 20 men wasn't Hannah's idea of hard work and keeping them from the hospital could probably be considered service in some aspect. Plus, if she agreed to help him out, maybe he'd help her out when she was ready to take off on her own. Of course, I'd be happy to. I might take you up on your offer to help with the berries, at that rate, though. Hannah knew the men would be asked to help with the garden which didn't bother her. At the rate she was going, she'd be there the next five years before she'd finish. Okay. That was an exaggeration, but it felt like it as the rose stretched before her along with meal prep and cleaning up. Relief smoothed the creases at the corners of Drake's eyes. Thanks, Hannah. And don't think I've forgotten about the business. I can just tell you don't want to talk about it. He reached into his back pocket. I got the mail and these were in there for you. I'll see you in the bunkhouse later. He winked and grabbed another handful of berries from the bucket, dancing away from her glare and chuckling. Rolling her eyes, Hannah laughed and put the bucket on the ground while she waited to inspect the stack of mail he'd handed her. After he disappeared around the side of the house, she lowered her gaze to the envelopes. Her stomach ached with anticipation. They hadn't been to town in a while to get their mail at the P.O. box and she tried not to think about it too much. Some canning catalogs and an invitation to set up a booth at the local fair were the first things in her stack. Then, second from the bottom was a white envelope with the emblem of a culinary school in the corner. Hannah's stomach twisted. She dropped the rest of the mail to land haphazardly amongst the berries and to the side of the bucket in the bark. Swallowing, she fingered the edges and the corners. Her application had been sent out a few weeks ago. She'd sent it with so many hopes and prayers attached. Now that the reply was there, she felt sick with nerves. 
glancing over her shoulder for any onlookers. Hannah bit her lip and then pried open the envelope flap. No, wait. She stopped, taking a deep breath. She couldn't do it there. What if she was accepted? Her excitement would be hard to conceal. And worse, what if she was rejected? Her tears and depression would prevent her from doing her job. She had to wait until later that night to open the reply. Plus, in all honesty, the anticipation wasn't too bad since she had the answer right there in her hand. She could hold on to it, savor it. Her dreams of escaping Montana were close to being realized. Was she going to be able to do everything she'd ever wanted? Or was she going to be stuck there as the youngest Montana Trails cousin forever? Chapter 2 Xander His jeans were well, stacked with a crease down the front. Maybe not washing them had been a mistake. The afternoon sun cast sharp shadows on the lines of his pants. Xander wouldn't accept anything less than the best, but the denim hadn't been properly broken in. If cowboys had a nerd version, he would get the label. Running his hands through his hair, he regretted stopping in Taylor Falls at the small boutique to ask for directions and get clothes. He'd bought the entire wardrobe for working a ranch, not just any ranch. Bella Acres. Without access to a washing machine, he decided to suffer through the scratchy new purchases and hope no one noticed what he wore. Trying to get on and off a horse, though, in denim that didn't want to move was proving to be difficult. And he didn't want to think about his boots. Dang things were apt to cause blisters before the day was out. Xander held his groan in. Just day one and he was already miserable. He missed his white's boots and his Alaskan king, sized bed. Tommy would never have let him get on a horse in unwashed jeans. At least his men would have been honest when he made a fool of himself. The men he was assigned to work with at Bella Acres left him out of any discussions and didn't include him in much beyond giving him dark looks as they clustered in place. Hooray for first days. Your last employer seemed pretty impressed with you, Xander. I look forward to seeing how things go here at Bella Acres for you. Drake Benson owned Bella Acres and was Nathan Rourke's brother, in, law, and Xander's new boss. According to Nathan, the man had swept in and stolen the land, the house, and his sisters out from under Nathan. The way Nathan told it, Drake was a nefarious swindler determined to ruin everything in Nathan's plans. Curiously, when Nathan spoke about Drake, his tone was riddled with bitterness but laced with envy and respect. Judging by the easy grin on Drake's mouth and the comfortable way he stood around the men in work clothes and worn boots, Xander couldn't help wondering just how much of Nathan's drunken rambling had been truth and how much had been bitter perception. Xander cleared his throat and shifted in the blistering new boots. Had anyone else heard the creaking of the unworn leather? He had to look like a dandified city boy. Not what he was going for in the least. Yes, sir. I got along great with my last boss. He better, too, since his foreman back home had set up the references like Xander had asked but had let his bias through. Xander would have to remember to keep Tommy's bonuses in check or the near. Hero worship from the men who worked for him could be a problem. Well, we're glad to have you. Drake resettled his hat. A habit Xander had picked up on as soon as he arrived. Some men spit or adjusted their pants. Drake adjusted his hat often and Xander found it to be an honest trait. The way your hat sat on your crown could make or break another man's impression of you, did you appear sneaky, forthright, or just plain dumb? The tilt of a hat could define that. Xander nodded politely. He'd up and left his own ranch on the east side of Montana to take the job at Bella Acres. Silver Spoon's ranch had more than a hundred hands working under his main foreman and Xander was taking a huge gamble by being gone six weeks like he planned. Six weeks should be plenty of time to fall in love. He hoped. He'd never been in love, but judging by the stories Nathan told, the Montana Trail's cousins were worth falling for. Not that he would fall for the entire group of cousins. He had his mind set on one, the last one. Hannah Rourke. Drake shoved off the side of the barn he leaned against and nodded with a satisfied smile at the group of men around him. With a new summer upon them, Drake had hired a fresh batch of hands and Xander had been lucky enough to get in on the ground floor. Unfortunately, he wasn't too well, versed in hand work, but he was a hard worker and an easy learner. He wasn't worried about the actual job itself. He was a little nervous about taking orders. That wasn't something someone like him did comfortably. He was a leader and he was wealthy. Why would he want to take orders from anyone else? 
You guys are in for a treat. My sister, in, law and my own wife are cooking for you tonight. They're better than any high, ranked restaurant. Cookie will be back in a couple days. He nodded his head toward the men and turned to gather some rope at the base of the barn wall. His wife was Stephanie. Was Drake talking about Hannah, too? Disconcerted by the sudden increase in his pulse rate, Xander sought for a more nonchalant tone than the tone of a lovesick kid, who had never actually met the woman he was supposed to love. What are their names? I want to be able to thank them proper. Did Drake sense his nervousness? Xander bent over and brushed off imaginary straw from the toe of his boot. He stood, his face now flushed from bending and not from the question. Hannah is my sister, in, law and Stephanie is my wife. They'll be down later and thank you for wanting to express gratitude. I'm in their debt for taking on this task. They're busy enough as it is. Drake looped the rope around his elbow and his hand, then tossed the bulk of it over his shoulder. He set out toward the front of the barn and the house, calling over his shoulder. Get settled, men. Tomorrow we'll roughen up this ranch and get some things done. Welcome to Bella Acres. Xander avoided the group camaraderie which was already forming in the six other men but decidedly kept him out of it. He'd hired one of them a few seasons back and he hadn't been fond of the man then. The ranch hand had been drunk most of the time. A glazed look in his eyes when he glanced at Xander explained the lack of recognition. Most likely the man was drunk again. He hadn't been far from the bottle or the bar the entire time he'd been in the season. He probably thought Xander was familiar but wasn't sure how. Hopefully. His drinking habits had stopped and Xander was just seeing the aftereffects of the amnestic side of alcoholic bouts, but Xander wouldn't count on it. Xander stepped to the side as the men passed by, laughing and talking amongst themselves as they headed toward the bunkhouse. After the men had left, Xander leaned against the newly painted red side of the barn and took a deep breath. What was he doing? Spring and early summer had left Montana smelling like a fresh pine potpourri bag as the occasional rainstorm kept things clean. Greenery was more abundant on the western side of the state, but Xander still missed the plains of his hometown and the way the sky stretched for miles before the ground broke up the endless blue. He checked once more for any passers-by or onlookers and then pulled out a picture of a family he'd stashed in his wallet. The family was large and the picture incomplete. Nathan had said many of the cousins in the picture had since gotten married or found their significant others. He'd glanced fondly at it while he'd been sitting at the bar by himself. Would Xander be able to recognize Hannah from the young girl she'd been in the picture? Not for the first time, he brushed his thumb over her features in the photo. Had she met someone already? Had she lost her heart to another man? Nathan hadn't talked to the family in a long while but he kept tabs on the cousins with various contacts he had around the state. He'd once mentioned getting text messages from his sisters and even cousins, but he never replied to them. He'd laughed at their persistence in keeping him up, to date, but his laughter always faded to sadness. The oldest trail had described Hannah and the family so often and so acutely, Xander couldn't be more enamored with them and the entire ideal around the Montana trails. He felt like he knew them, like they were his family, his cousins. He wanted that sense of belonging that Nathan had abandoned when he'd lost everything. Of course, Xander understood why Nathan had given everything up. Nathan was very forthcoming as they'd spoken over their beers, almost as if Nathan needed to divulge what kept him on the run. Nathan needed an ear and Xander was just lonely enough to lend one. Hannah was going to be the only chance Xander had at joining the family. At the risk of sounding like an obsessed stalker, he couldn't help longing for something so basic yet so valuable. She was his one shot and the way Nathan had spoken about her, Xander had no doubt they'd make a tremendous match. She wasn't headstrong and wouldn't challenge him. Xander needed that. He needed someone who wouldn't fight with him and who he could make a perfect marriage with. He couldn't wait to meet her. Would she recognize him as her future husband when they met? Would she know right away that they were meant to be together? Could she have any idea that Xander was already in love with her? She would. And she and Xander could ride off into the sunset together. Chapter 3 Hannah The kitchen at the house was Hannah's favorite place to cook, but she wouldn't turn down the chance to work in the commercial-grade kitchen Drake had put in the remodeled barn and outbuilding. The best part was probably the stainless, steel counters. She'd heard that all of the restaurants had them, but she'd only been to a few over the years. 
Taylor Falls wasn't exactly the optimal place to go for five star dining out experiences. Wiping her hands on the white cloth she'd tucked in her apron, Hannah thrust her hands on her hips to survey the kitchen and get things figured out in her head. She'd taken away the lure of temptation of opening the envelope by tucking it into the top drawer of her nightstand in her room. What if it said yes? What if she was going to be a chef and not just someone who cooked really well? There was so much potential. Keeping that envelope tucked away was the only thing keeping her sane for the moment. Her dreams spread before her with so many possibilities that nothing felt like work. Drake had taken the new hands for a tour of the property earlier and then must have dismissed them because the sound of boots moving across the floors above her had grown into a cacophony of dragging and stomping. Drake would have to insulate the space between the two floors better. The noise was distracting. She'd gone with chicken and mashed potatoes and gravy for the main part of the meal. A fresh cucumber and onion salad and homemade rolls would round out the dinner. The men wouldn't care if she served rice and chili but she cared. Serving amazing food was something she took pride in. Even if no one else gave a hoot. Stephanie had actually been a huge help until that point. She'd run back to the house to grab the stack of multiple serving spoons Hannah had just bought on her last trip to town. Hannah sniffed the rich aromas filling the kitchen. Yep, everything smelled ready. Except the rolls. They needed about five more minutes before she pulled them out to rest before applying a coat of melted butter to the tops. She turned and strode outside onto the north, facing deck Drake had added for outdoor eating in the summer. The shade from the building gave ample space for comfort outside and Drake had covered the area in case of inclement weather. Rain didn't always cool things down in the Montana summer heat. And then nothing anyone did would warm things up once the snow flew. A large metal triangle hung from the eave of the overhang. Ringing the bell was by far the best part of doing the meals for the hands. She loved what it signified. Dinner was on and it was time to eat what she'd spent all her time doing. Not to mention the fact that it was also like a finishing bell. She'd been working on the meal for a couple hours and the bell ringing said she was done cooking. She loved cooking but she was still exhausted after the hard work. It was the bell that said she could take a break. She turned back to the kitchen, rolling her head on her shoulders and tucking some stray strands of hair behind her ear. That sure smells good, ma'am. A cowboy with green eyes and tan skin stood in her path leading back to the kitchen. He had his thumbs tucked into the tops of jean pockets that looked custom fit to his form. And what a form. The white top of an undershirt peeked out from the opening of his collar as he'd left a couple buttons of his plaid work shirt undone. Each batch of cowhands brought their own Lothario and this one, with his swarthy good looks and direct way of looking at a person was going to be the most persuasive one yet. There had to be a goal out there from the universe to make her dreams hard to achieve. If she was entranced with a cowboy's good looks, she'd never want to leave Bella Acres. This one's tone of voice sent a sensation down her like the one you got when you took a bite of a really decadent piece of chocolate. She shifted her gaze away from him and smiled tightly. Thank you. It's about time to eat, if you want to wash up. She kept her tone light with politeness but forced indifference into her words. There was no way she was going to encourage any interest from anyone. Not while she had an envelope with her dreams in it inside the house. Hang the man for being so good, looking, though. 5 0. -oh. Clock shadow darkened the angles of his jawline and enhanced the straight shape of his nose and the intensity of his gaze. He had the slightest bump on the bridge between his eyes, which only made him more interesting instead of marring his looks. Broad shoulders didn't hide the rolling edges of muscles under the well. Fitted shirts. Strong neck muscles flexed as he inclined his head and she'd be a stray dog's aunt if she missed the shape of his hands with well. Maintained fingernails. How out of place on a cowboy. Wait, why was she noticing things like his hands? She wasn't interested in cowboys that moved from ranch to ranch. She knew how they thought and their goals. She was related to quite a few who used to be like that. True. Those cousins had settled down when they'd found the right person to love and would probably live disgustingly, happily, ever, after. But that was beside the point since Hannah wasn't them and her fairy tale ending was wrapped up in making herself happy and not counting on anyone to do it for her. She didn't want to settle down, not yet. She had too many dreams. And even if she did want to, there wasn't a ranch hand in the entire state of Montana that was in the position to offer her a happy, ever, after worth trading everything for. No, she wanted too much, needed too much. 
The cowboy standing in front of her with his hypnotic eyes wasn't going to be the one who rescued her from her dreams. He'd be the one to tie her to the ranch. I already washed up. Ma'am. Is there anything I can do to help? He arched an eyebrow at her and waited on the other side of the counter as she walked into the inner depths of the kitchen. Was that a pine and spice men's cologne he wore? Whatever it was, the aroma was rich and heady while being subtly present. It didn't overwhelm the smell of the rolls baking or the chicken gravy. His scent mingled nicely in the kitchen setting and Hannah found herself wanting to walk beside him to catch another waft. Yeah, real strong, Hannah. She sighed, disappointed that she couldn't even stick with her resolve when a man like that ranch hand walked by. Maybe she'd been stood up on dates for too long. Maybe she was lonelier than she thought. Either way, she didn't need to have a fantasy full of what ifs with him while she was trying to get dinner on. She turned toward him, hands on her hips and her forehead furrowed. If you really want to help? I'd appreciate it if you could fill those watcher pitchers over there with ice from the box and then water and add cut lemons from the sink. Smiling her gratitude, Hannah grabbed a bright red folded hand towel and pulled the rolls from the oven, placing them on the gas range, style stovetop to cool. Turning off the oven, she closed the door and set the towel on the counter. She moved to grab plates and silverware to take them to the buffet, style table set up on the far side of the room beside the door to the deck. The cowboy grabbed the pitchers as instructed and busily filled them at the left sink of the trio basin set in the stainless steel counter. Hannah was more aware of where he was than what she was doing. They worked congenially together in the quiet and Hannah almost forgot he was there, almost forgot was as close as she was going to get to be able to ignore his presence. There was something about him that continued to draw her gaze and it wasn't just the bunching and flexing muscles of his back and exposed forearms under rolled up sleeves. He finished filling the pitchers and placed them on the table beside the cups. Turning back to her, he clapped his hands together and looked around, as if searching for someone else. Okay, that's done. What else can I do for you? The look in his eyes bordered on suggestive but in more of a testing, the, water's way than anything else. He approached Hannah, the curve of his smile unnerving as she tried to move around him to put the gravy-warming dish on the table. The cowboy sidestepped to stay in front of her and cautiously claimed the dish from her hands, holding her gaze the entire time. She let him take the pot and watched as he placed it by the ladle he'd set out while putting the table together for sizing. How had he known where it went? Not that it was hard to figure out, but he'd put it right where it went instead of just placing it on the end of the table where most men would have done. His proximity stunned her enough she didn't move from her spot while he set things up. He turned back to Hannah a devilish grin on his face. As he approached, Hannah put up a hand to stop his advance. That's far enough, Don Juan. He knitted his eyebrows together, his grin unwavering. That's not my, Hannah shook her head, stepping back for more distance. Nope, I don't care what your name is. I'm just being blunt here. I'm not interested. She didn't share that she didn't date ranch hands or that there was a conflict of interests. Not to mention with how high the turnaround rate was in the industry, falling for a ranch hand wasn't smart for her heart or her emotional stability. He'd be long gone and she'd still be figuring out what was going on. He continued approaching her, as if her words hadn't meant anything. But once he reached her, he smiled softly, the flirting greatly dimmed in his gaze. I'm sorry. I just want to help. I'm not proposing marriage or trying to be inappropriate given the circumstances. He stuck out his hand and smiled. I'm Xander. Not Don Juan. Far from it in fact. He laughed at himself with derision but soft humor as well. Eyeing him suspiciously, Hannah narrowed her gaze. I'm not playing. I'm not interested. I'm not available. An almost hurt but determined look filled Xander's gaze. He nodded tightly, but didn't let his grin dim. Of course. Whoever he is, he's a lucky man. Whoever who was. Hannah's heart wasn't taken by anyone. All she'd said was she wasn't available. He didn't need to know it was because of her dreams and not because of the hold of some guy. With Xander's easy acquiescence, Hannah had the distinct feeling it wasn't over and she had no idea why that left a sensation of anticipation in her gut, and not in a bad way. Stephanie, Stephanie stared out the window toward the barn. She chewed on her lower lip and blinked. She refused to let Nathan's actions upset her. She was trying to move on from Emma's loss, 
from her brother's loss. She couldn't let his wish to leave impede her happiness. But it was. She just wanted to marry Drake and live happy, ever, after with him. But she couldn't. She couldn't do any of that without wondering if Nate's return was going to be the day after she walked down the aisle. Because what if it was? What if Nate showed up the day after she got married? She could have had him be a part of the most important day of her life. She couldn't keep putting the wedding off. She decided she was going to marry Drake. She'd set the date. Nate had two weeks to get back or she was marrying Drake without him. Jareth had already offered to give her away. Dang it, all of the Montana trails had offered. From what Cyan had said, it sounded like all of them were planning on it. Without sounding ungrateful, Stephanie didn't want them to. If she couldn't have Nate, she didn't want anyone. No one. She'd walk that aisle by herself with her flowers in her hands and her chin held high. Even as her heart was breaking. Whatever. It wasn't a big deal. She could give up that dream for a bigger dream of being with Drake and making a family. She'd made him wait long enough. Poor guy already referred to her as his wife. They might as well make it official. And Stephanie could finally share a room with Drake as man and wife. Taking a deep breath. Stephanie turned from the window and tread across the room to the front door. She had to help Hannah get dinner on for the men. After the work was done, then she could focus on the things that took up her thoughts. Maybe she could wish on a star that Nate would come home. Nothing else was working. Chapter 4 Xander The woman never did introduce herself, but that didn't stop Xander from trying to be friendly. At first, he'd thought for sure she was Hannah. She was young and there was no ring on her finger, but the more they'd talked and the boldness in her rejection convinced him there was no way she was Hannah. She'd even claimed to be unavailable. Probably because she was married to Drake and he was hitting on the boss's wife. Nathan had described his youngest sister as shy and demure. He said she was a hard worker but not a leader and certainly not someone to bluntly reject someone who hadn't even made any advances. Nathan had shared a lot about his family and with small questions placed here and there by Xander. Nathan didn't stop talking. Xander had remembered everything, and then some. Xander had given the woman the impression he was interested without even trying. But he couldn't deny her attractiveness. Honestly, Xander had no doubt a woman with her looks and personality, what he'd glimpsed so far, would be married quickly. Assuming she was Drake's wife, Stephanie, wasn't a hard conclusion to come to. Nathan had described Stephanie as anything but shy and all kinds of bold. He'd even said that as much as he disliked Drake, who happened to be the brother of Nathan's deceased wife, Emma, he didn't wish the trouble a woman like Stephanie would bring a man. He'd relayed all that with a large brotherly grin on his face. Nathan had only been two drinks in during that conversation. At least this one had the decency to have a flush creep up her cheeks at Xander's words. He didn't want to be too off, setting. Stephanie was going to be his sister, in, law someday. She just didn't know it. I grabbed the new serving spoons, but I couldn't find the tongs. Did you grab them by chance? Another woman walked into the kitchen, her similar coloring marking her as the other woman, the sister. She had to be Hannah. Xander couldn't hide his disappointment for a brief second and then covered it with a smile. The new sister who had walked in was certainly beautiful, but she didn't warm his insides like the first one. But he refused to be attracted to a married woman. He couldn't help but think how grossly uncomfortable holidays would be with the family, if he was thinking of the way the sister, in, law, smelled like cookies. Desperate to be attracted to the sister he was there for, Xander smiled and turned fully toward her. He reached out to take the armful of spoons still in their wrappers. Here, let me help. That looks like a lot. She shot a startled glance at his face and then passed him to the other woman. Xander could almost see her guard go up exactly what he would expect of someone who was supposed to be shy. Thank you. Her reserved answer broadened his grin while sinking his heart. He didn't want to be right. He wanted the first one, but the second one was going to be the woman he had to win over. Why did the last sister have to be quiet and not so open? Xander would have to learn to like that. He'd thought he'd been ready for that type of personality, but the glimpse of the other sister's attitude made him rethinking his desires. He followed the woman he thought was Hannah to the side table with a garbage beside it. How did a pretty thing like you, get stuck doing this? He turned on the charm and leaned on the table while he watched her. Xander put everything into his efforts not to check on the other sister. Oh, 
he was in for a long courtship. The woman's disinterest marked her as Hannah. The first one had announced her disinterest, but she'd been bold and honest about it. The second one was giving off her disinterest in waves and had nothing to do with actively engaging him verbally. Can I ask why you're hitting on my fiancé? Drake strolled into the kitchen, an amused glint in the hard challenge of his gaze. He was giving Xander a chance to explain, which most men wouldn't. Any other man would have punched first, asked questions second, if at all. Embarrassed, Xander stepped back from Stephanie, now he knew for sure who she was, with his hands raised palms out. I. I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to flirt. I'm just trying to help. Well, I can see how it would be confusing on her availability. Drake approached Stephanie and took her left hand in his. Steph, you promised you'd start wearing the ring. I didn't buy that huge rock for you to leave it by the sink. He spoke to her with deference as if she were the most precious thing to him. Stephanie rolled her eyes, but nodded. I know. Do you think I can get a plain band for working around here, though? With the wedding close, I think I can use a band. I'm scared I'm going to lose that ring. She scrunched her lips to the side. Of course. Whatever you want. Drake leaned forward and kissed his wife's forehead. He glanced toward the other woman Xander wasn't ready to acknowledge as Hannah. Hannah, did you need anything else before I let the rest of the hands in? I heard the bell, but I wanted to make sure before we converged on you. I'm good. Thanks, Drake. Xander here has been helping me. She didn't look directly at Xander nor did she point out that they'd had a very to, the, point conversation. How did he look to her now? Like he was the type to move from woman to woman probably. Great. She was exactly the one he wanted, and could even admit to a strong attraction to her and he had just pushed himself backward on his path to getting her affections. Why hadn't she been available? She'd claimed she wasn't available. That was disturbing and more than a little worrisome. Did that mean she was already taken? Had he gotten there too late? Had he lost his chances with her and the family? Who was he going to have to pay off to walk out of her life? Because he'd do it. He had no problem doing it. Xander smiled and nodded his head as he followed Drake from the kitchen and onto the veranda, style deck. A good number of the crew were already outside waiting. The setting could have been at a popular restaurant as the white tables and metal chairs overlooked a quaintly arranged garden and lawn. The house settled in sight but as if it too had grown from the ground and belonged there with the mountains in the distance as its backdrop. Long shadows stretched across the fields around them from the tree-covered hills rising from the edges of the property. A soft breeze carried with it the promise of a warm evening. The western side of the state favored the scent of pine and alfalfa while Xander's side of the state bore a subtler flavor in the air of wheat and sun. As the men lined up to go through the buffet of delicious-smelling food, Xander shuffled along with his plate, scooping from the dishes and arranging the food as he went. The golden gravy had to have been created by a magician as it had been sitting out for a while and no congealing had taken place. As getting through the line took time, Xander continued studying his surroundings. He'd been behind the barn for the most part, getting acquainted with the tools and tasks they'd be expected to perform on a daily basis. The house had no rundown look to it. Nathan had described Bella Acres with fondness and an aching longing. But he described a falling apart porch, trim that hadn't been replaced in years, broken and cracked windows, peeling paint on everything, and a general desiccation of a well loved ranch. Drake had done wonders with the place, and Xander could see how Drake and Stephanie were the better option for the home to so many people. Only three people lived there, but according to Nathan, everyone gathered at Bella Acres often because it was like the Montana Trail's home base of sorts. How long had Nathan been away? He'd never given a date or any real indication of time. Sure, he'd been with Xander at the ranch for a year now, but how long before that? His description of Hannah's personality had been way off. Somehow Nathan had mixed up his sisters. While that change had been more in Xander's favor than he'd wanted. At least in the long term, since he was attracted to the real Hannah and not the sister. In law he'd thought, it still put a twist in his plans. A woman who was shy and waiting for love, waiting for her turn to get married and settle down had been the foundation in Xander's plan to woo and marry her within six weeks. Her determined declaration that she wasn't interested or available complicated things. Especially, 
If what she said was the truth. He needed more time to consider the situation. Calling and discussing things with Nathan was out of the question. Nathan had no idea Xander was there at Bella Acres. That was a secret Xander planned on keeping to himself for as long as possible. Through the buffet line, Xander grabbed a glass of lemon water with utensils and a napkin. Sitting at a side table, he dug into the dinner on his plate, taking bites of chicken and mashed potatoes in turn. As the complimentary tastes astounded his taste buds, Xander slowed down to enjoy the meal more. He'd met Hannah and she was nothing like Nathan had described. Add to that the lack of information on Hannah's talent in the kitchen and Nathan might have been gone longer than Xander had assumed. The cell phone he kept in his back pocket buzzed against his rear hip. The only calls he got to that number were from his foreman and only in an emergency. Wiping his mouth with his napkin, Xander stood, tucking his napkin beneath his plate and nodding at the other hand who had claimed a spot at the table. I'll be back, can you make sure no one moves my plate? The hand nodded as he tore into the white flesh of the chicken. If anyone was going to take Xander's plate, it was probably going to be that guy. Xander stood, leaving his meal in the care of a man who hadn't brought a napkin or a drink with him to the table. Stepping around to the side of the barn, Xander kept the volume of his voice low. Putting on his boss hat after trying to adapt to the employee role was a bit of a switch. Tommy, how goes it? He stared off into the fading light as the sun dipped below the ridge. The colors overwhelmed the mind, but Xander didn't have time to dwell on the beauty of the place. Hey, Alex. I just wanted to touch base with you about some issues coming up this week. Also, a few of the buyers wanted to come in three weeks to check the horses, but they wanted to see you. Tommy was upbeat but to the point. He was one of the best foremen Xander had ever watched work at Silver Spoon's ranch, either for him or for his father. And Tommy called him Alex. The name his father had chosen for him to go by since Xander was the third in a line of Alexanders. His father, Alexander II, went by Al. His father, the first, went by Alex. Xander's father had wanted that tradition carried forward as well, calling Xander Alex from the time he was a small child. It had stuck until Xander had decided to branch out in search of the family he wanted. Things were changing and Xander had to make sure they changed the direction he wanted and not the direction someone else did. He kicked the dirt at his feet. Well, let them know it's six weeks or I'll look elsewhere for buyers. I'm selling to them as a favor. I can still go to auction. He wasn't going to cut his time at Bella Acres unless the world fell down around him. I'm going to need every minute I can get here. I understand, sir. With the new hires we've topped one, hundred, twenty, one. I've accepted Nathan as my second and I appreciate the suggestion. He seems to be steady and the men follow his direction well. I'll call you Friday with an update. Tommy didn't voice his misgivings again about the time frame or about Xander being gone. He had spoken his mind when Xander had brought it up, concerned that it was the middle of the high season and Tommy needed Xander there. There is that other matter we need to discuss about the gelding. Once Xander had said it was the only time to get hired on at a small ranch like Bella Acres and he'd explained his goal, Tommy had nodded and agreed offering to give references to help. Tommy had been with the family long enough, he thought of Xander as a son. The familial feeling was mutual. Tommy also constantly prodded Xander to find a wife. Since that was the goal of this trip, Tommy didn't argue with its necessity. He wanted Xander married and more strong generations reared at the ranch. He sucked up his opposition to Xander's ways to get it done which was a good thing. Xander had a specific goal to win Hannah's heart before he left to go back to his life. The new developments would create a harder task and Xander needed every moment he could grasp. Hopefully, Hannah's determined disinterest dissolved under persistent courting. Xander needed her to go along with him and fall hard and fast. So far, Xander wasn't starting out well. Cyan, have you heard from him? Do we even know where he might be? Cyan stared at her son, Daniel. As he slept, there was something peaceful in the way his little lips moved gently while he rested. No, Cyan, honestly, we aren't sure where to even start. I've heard so many rumors about where he's been, I can't keep track of them. Not to mention, apparently no one knows a Nate Rourke. Someone said they haven't heard that name in a long time. Do you think he's using an alias? Jareth checked in every chance he had. He and Kyle had decided to take turns leaving their wives for a few days at a time to search for Nate. 
The wayward cousin had decided he didn't want to be found which made worrying about him that much easier. And searching for him that much harder. Cyan sighed. She reached up and gently massaged the tense muscles at the back of her neck. She didn't want to be stressed out. She didn't want to be worried that Nate wouldn't make it to Stephanie's wedding. She just wanted to celebrate her good news. What if we stopped looking for him? There. She said it. Grimacing. She stared unseeingly at her son while she waited for Jarrett's reply. Because, honestly, what if they stopped looking for the oldest Montana trail? He obviously didn't want to be found. His heartache had hardened him against ever being with his family again. What if they were trying to force him to do something he didn't want to do? Actually, there was no what, if about it. He wanted no part of the Montana trails, or he would have come home and helped them, sorrowed with them laughed with them, and healed with them. Instead, he'd run off, dodging every attempt they made to contact him. He darted from ranch to ranch, as if he could outrun the memory of his long, lost wife. As if he wasn't hurting his family who was still alive. Jareth sighed, the sound echoing over the line. Don't think I haven't thought of that. Then why are we forcing this? Give him his space. He needs the chance to choose for himself, Jareth. You've said that numerous times in the past. What's changed? Cyan turned away from the small crib she'd placed in the front room for afternoon nap time so she could easily check on Daniel. He was growing and fast, but she wanted to be around him every chance she had. Stephanie only has two weeks. Two weeks and then Nathan will have missed out on her wedding. My wedding. Kyle's wedding. He'll have missed out on so much. It just... It feels like this is a monumental point in the family. If they get married and Nate isn't there, what does that mean? Worry laced Jareth's words. Cyan understood. She nodded. Right. I get it. Nathan. No, Nate. She paused beside the counter and cocked her head to the side. You've been looking all this time for Nate Rourke. Has anyone asked around about a Nathan Rourke? Or even just Nathan? They were all so focused on holding on to the cousin they'd known and loved. What if he was determined to leave that part of him behind? Jareth's moment of silence didn't take long. Just Nate Rourke. You're a genius. I don't know why we didn't think of that. But Cyan had no doubt it was because they were too close to the situation. How long had Nate been trying to escape his family? Almost as long as they'd been chasing him. I better go, Cy. Love you. Jareth's words jarred Cyan from her thoughts. No, wait. I. I need to tell you something. She'd been waiting for the magic moment, but it never seemed to come up. She bit her lip. What would he say? Okay, is everything all right? Instant worry colored Jareth's voice and Cyan missed his arms around her more in that moment than any other. She shook her head, even though he couldn't see. Everything is perfect. I just. I've been wanting to tell you for a couple weeks now, but it hasn't seemed like the right time. She cleared her throat and spread her hand out flat on the counter. We're going to have another baby. There. She'd gotten the reveal done. Nothing more to worry about. Except, what if Jareth didn't want a second child? Especially so soon after the first. They hadn't talked about it since they were both so wrapped up in the first baby. His silence felt like a pulse of thunder. Was he just absorbing the information? Was he excited? What did he look like while he sat on his end of the line? Cyan's chest rose and fell as her breathing quickened. Um, Jareth, are you there? Are you mad? It wasn't her fault. Instantly, her defenses raised. She wasn't the only one in the marriage bed. I'm just, wow, another baby? Even though Jareth pulled the phone away from his face, his holler was easy to make out. I'm having another baby. Laughter followed and he came back on the phone. I love you. I can't wait to have another child with you. Are you feeling okay? Do you need anything? I'll head home. Cyan closed her eyes, the smile on her face pushing at her cheeks. She shook her head and murmured, No, I don't need anything. I'm glad you're happy. Relief left her feeling deflated, but not in a bad way. More as if she'd been hyped up with anxiety, and now, she could enjoy the moment of rediscovery. I'm ecstatic. I love you. 
I'll head home now. Jareth hung up. He would head home. Cyan had no doubt about that. Maybe they were all burnt out on trying to find Nate. Maybe what they all needed was a reset. Cyan would ask Hannah to text him one last time. Because if anyone had been trying to connect with Nate over the years since he'd left, it was his youngest sister. Unfortunately, Cyan had a feeling that Hannah was getting more burnt out than all of them combined. Searching for Nate had taken its toll on the entire family. Cyan blamed Nate for being selfish and having no regard for others. What was best for Nate didn't appear to be best for the family. They would have to accept that. All of them. And Stephanie just might have to accept the fact that her brother wouldn't make it to her wedding. Cyan gritted her teeth. She could accept it, if it didn't hurt the people she loved so much. But what could she do about it, that no one else had been able to accomplish? Chapter 5 Hannah Cleaning up after a meal was Hannah's least favorite part, but she almost didn't care that night. The faster the night went by the better. Picking up the mess and taking care of the kitchen was guaranteed to pass time. She really didn't want to go into the house only to sit around talking with Stephanie while the letter acted like the tell, tail heart and mocked her from her room. At least out in the bunkhouse, she had a distraction and no letter under the same roof to dwell on. She dipped her hands into the hot soapy water and claimed one of the large pans she'd used to braise the chicken. The dishwasher hummed beside her filled with dinner plates and other smaller items. Cleaning the large pans by hand was faster than waiting for the load in the washer to finish. Stephanie had opted not to go inside either, choosing instead to stay with Hannah and clean. She leaned close to Hannah's right side, wiping a wet large platter with the dishcloth in her hands. The newest hand is pretty good looking. She wiggled her eyebrows at Hannah and straightened, waiting for a reaction. Hannah sighed, but didn't let the knot. So, subtle hint rile her. He sure is, and he's pining for you. Want me to set something up there? Her teasing tone wasn't as strong as it should have been. There was more than a little jealousy that once again Hannah had been looked over. Even though she'd said she wasn't interested, that didn't mean he had to give up so fast. Why couldn't he have put forth a little more effort? Or asked, what made her unavailable? Maybe that's what she was looking for in the love department, someone who wouldn't give up at the slightest hint of trouble, or even at the worst storm of their lives. Maybe she needed consistency and determination. Maybe, maybe she needed someone to be interested first before listing off all the things she needed to change. Nate had run from the family after giving everything he had in himself to give to his wife, Emma. She'd, died and he'd left. He had emptied so much of himself into fighting her illness, fighting the impending loss, that she accepted but he wouldn't. He had nothing left to give his family. He didn't even have enough to grieve properly. As he'd ridden away on his horse. Hannah's heart had shattered into so many pieces. She'd promised not to look for a love that was so strong it ripped one's soul from their body with the loss. Hannah needed someone who wasn't going anywhere. Whose loyalty was stronger and more lasting than even grief. True, Nathan hadn't left the person he'd fallen in love with, but what would he have done if Emma had been able to have children and then she'd died? What then? Would Nathan have abandoned their babies, like he'd abandoned Hannah and Stephanie? She'd always thought Nate was a different type of man, until he'd left. Now, Hannah wasn't sure there was that type of man anywhere. Stephanie finished drying the last dish Hannah had placed in the racks and set it to the side. She thrust her hand on her hip and tilted her head toward Hannah. You're not going to find happiness sitting here upset with Nate and holding a grudge. Hannah. No one can make you happy. You have to choose to be that way on your own, you know? You have to take the steps to be happy. Waiting for someone else to come along and fix everything is choosing to be miserable for a long time, because no one can fix that but you. Hannah huffed at the prodding. Yeah, except I'm not miserable, that was a lie. And I'm not interested in anyone. Steph, not being interested in any of the cowboys that ride through here isn't me choosing to be unhappy. It's me looking out for me. I have other dreams. I don't want to fall in love. There's too much involved and I want to focus on other things. Not that she was close to falling for Xander or anyone else. Plus, Xander wasn't an option. He'd been more interested in her unavailable sister than in Hannah. Hannah wasn't meant to find love and she was just secure enough with herself to be fine with that. All that aside, that was the closest she'd come to telling Stephanie about her dreams to leave Bella Acres. 
Stephanie's potential reaction to the full declaration held Hannah back from any true confessions. If Stephanie didn't agree with Hannah's decisions, she wouldn't support her and she would do everything she could to change Hannah's mind. Hannah didn't need someone blocking her. She needed to be able to hold on with her tenuous grasp to her dreams. She couldn't afford to let anyone stomp on them or make them seem smaller than they were. She held off telling Stephanie. She held off telling anyone. Placing the last pan on the rack, Hannah pulled the plug to the sink and wiped down the backsplash behind the faucet and the counter space. She ignored her sister's wondering expression and yawned. It's been a long day. Thanks for your help. I'm gonna gather eggs and close up the chickens. See you inside. She offered a tight smile to her sister, but didn't linger. Lectures from Stephanie were the last thing that would boost Hannah's nerves. What if she didn't get into the school after declaring her independence? She was honestly afraid her determination to set out on her own in search of her own dreams would dim. Hannah doubted Stephanie even really heard what Hannah had said. She opened the door, exhaling and then breathing in the crisp cooling summer air. It was still early enough in the season that when the sun went down the temperature cooled dramatically. The early summer evenings were Hannah's favorite and she had no problem taking her time to get her evening chores done. Stepping onto the deck, Hannah dismounted the stairs in the direction of the coop. Then she stopped, turning back to the barn. She'd forgotten to return the egg basket to the coop earlier that morning. Rounding the building, she came up short as she found Xander facing away from her with a cell phone held to his ear. Cut the deal. I don't want to mess with her development. If they can't wait, then they don't need her. She's too spirited to push like that. He waited a moment, leaning his head back and placing his hand on his other hip. Yes, thank you, Tommy. I'll check in with you in a few days. He hung up the phone, sighing as he turned, tucking the small device into his pant pocket. Glancing up, he paused as he took in her presence. His eyes widened and he watched her as if she'd caught him doing drugs or stealing. After a moment, something shifted in his gaze and he pierced her with conviction. Conviction. What did he have to be so assured about? She swallowed, taken aback by the look of confidence in his gaze. Hannah motioned over her shoulder. Um, I forgot the chicken basket, um. Excuse me. She stepped around him, discomfited by his commanding presence. Why hadn't she noticed even more of that in the kitchen? He gave orders on the phone like he'd been born to do it. Seeing him taking directions from Drake would seem unnatural at this point. Even Drake didn't have the magnetism exuding from the man standing outside her barn. Hannah. Xander inclined his head, taking off his hat and tucking it under his arm. Xander. She avoided his gaze and retrieved the egg basket from the hook just inside the door. She returned on her original path to the coop, sidestepping Xander again as she passed ignoring him on that route. She wasn't sure what else to say to him that she hadn't already said. Plus, she'd been adamant in her refusal to be interested or even available. What more did he want? What more did she want? He fell into step a couple feet behind her, the rustle of his boots on the medium, length grass mixing with her breathing. Did she turn and talk to him or act like he wasn't there? They got to the coop and garden before she could decide one way or the other so Hannah let them just exist together in silence. She didn't need to pursue a conversation anyway. The only thing she could focus on was her letter waiting for her and the fact that the ranch hand following her still smelled delicious. The chicken were just lining up in the run to head into the coop. Hannah paused beside the door and waited, the basket swinging indolently from her fingers. Is this your garden? Xander's polite tone didn't bring out the bristling his flirting had. He stepped closer to her, but not enough to invade her space. She glanced at him quickly for a clue as to what his goal was. She wasn't going to make it so he could see Stephanie. Hannah wasn't that type of bridge. He could just forget it. But there was a sincerity in his face that suggested he really was interested in the answer to his question. She spoke quietly, suddenly nervous about the topic and sharing too much. It is now. It was my sister, in, laws. Before that, my mom's. Stephanie's? Xander lifted a leg and rested his boot on the lower rung of the newer chicken run fence. That fence could support his leg's weight. The older garden fence would have buckled under anything other than a light rain. Hannah had finally given in to Drake and allowed revisions to the chicken run fencing and Coyote broke in the previous year and got a hold of her favorite hen. 
He'd fix that fencing fast. She wouldn't let him anywhere near the garden. Hannah laughed at his question, shaking her head. No. Stephanie is my sister. Emma was my sister, in, law, but, she's not anymore. He'd brought up Stephanie which could mean he was trying to get information about her, or he was trying to be unembarrassed by the incident before dinner. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have known you were sisters. You look so much alike. He ignored the sharp look Hannah shot him as she checked for teasing or flirting. Holding his hat still, he ran his empty hand through his hair. Dark wavy curls moved around and then fell under the weight of his thick hair to its original position albeit slightly less pressed against his skull. How would you know? You just met us. Hannah offered with a grin, then grew quiet. No, Emma, well, Stephanie's older than me, and then there's our brother, Nate. He's the oldest, out of all of the cousins, too. But he's not here anymore. The bitterness in her tone was strong, even to her. Emma was his wife. Is he dead or something? Xander held up his hands, softly shaking his head. I'm sorry, that was. I'm not trying to be insensitive. I just want to make sure I understand. I made a huge gaffe in there and I want to make it up to you. I was interested in you, but you made it clear, and I was trying to soothe my aching pride. His casual explanation filled with compliments confused Hannah. She wasn't sure what to make of it. Why he wanted to understand anything about her family didn't make sense to Hannah either, but someone was asking about them and, for once, Hannah wanted to talk. It didn't seem to hurt as bad right then. No, he's not dead. Emma is. She died a while back and Nate left us. He just up and left. I sincerely hope he's not dead, but at this rate? He might as well be. Hannah had overheard Drake talking to the men at dinner and Xander had mentioned being from the east side of the state. She glanced at him from the corner of her eye. The old, now. Dim twinkle of hope in her heart stirred at the chance that she might hear something about her brother. Anything. She turned to face Sander. I heard you tell Drake you're from Eastern Montana. Have you heard of Nate Rourke? She wouldn't focus on the fact that she just admitted she had eavesdropped on his conversation. That humiliation didn't matter, if he had information about her brother. Xander looked from her to the chickens and considered her question. Nate Rourke? Not that I can recall. I'd be happy to make some calls and see what I come up with. I know a lot of people on that side of the state. But, it is a big area. Hope rekindled at his words and then diminished at the presence of but in his words. But what? I'm not going to date you or anything just for information. But the chance that he would be interested in her enough to blackmail her for a date actually stirred something in her chest. Did she honestly think she wouldn't date him just for information on her brother? she would do a lot worse to find Nate. A simple date was nothing and she'd agree right there, if that's what Xander wanted. Xander jerked back, returning his gaze to her face. His tone dripped derision as if she'd insulted him. I would never coerce a lady to spend time with me, nor would I presume to place you in that type of situation. Information should be free. He squinted at her and then shook his head, placing his hat back on. Now. It makes my request to be friends seem shallow when I just wanted to set that misunderstanding in the kitchen behind us. I don't want you to think I have bad intentions toward you. Hannah wasn't sure if she should be embarrassed or impressed. Maybe a little of both when he was so open and forthright with her. That combined with his manner of speaking, and Hannah could just as well be talking to a gentleman from the past. I'm sorry to be so presumptuous. Of course, we can be friends. She swallowed. Her main goal had always been to find her brother or at least get more information. After failing so long at her main desire, she'd moved her goal from reuniting the pieces of her family to seeking her own dreams that would take her out of the fractured space she existed in. The desire to find Nate had never completely dissipated and with the hint of a promise from Xander the need to have her brother around roared to life as if a fresh breeze on a smoldering coal. Hannah held up a hand and closed her eyes. Don't say it. If you're not going to do it. Please don't say it. I haven't seen him in a long time. I miss him, and if you don't do it, that will. She opened her eyes and twisted her lips to the side. She blinked back tears and already resented the entire encounter. He didn't need to see her vulnerability. Nobody did. What if I can't find him? The hard edge of Xander's voice pulled her gaze to his face. Challenge in Xander's eyes made Hannah face her reality. 
honestly? I can handle that. If you say you're going to try and do something and you don't actually do it, though, that's worse because it's an avenue not explored and it's the what. Ifs I can't handle. She lifted a hand and gripped the metal pole holding the chicken wire up. It's like when you don't want to leave your post because you're certain the person you're waiting for is just a couple seconds behind. Then those seconds become minutes and then hours and soon you realize you've wasted years of your life waiting. She was well into her twenties and she'd spent all of her life waiting for her brother to return to them. After her parents had died, he'd become her world. Then he'd left. Hannah had started believing she wasn't worth staying for and she resented Nate for that. Xander dropped his foot and moved to face Hannah. His lids drooped with a slumberous shift, hypnotically holding her gaze as he spoke with deep intent. I'm a man of my word, Hannah Rourke. Trying to lighten the mood, Hannah breathed shallowly, nodding slowly, unable to shake his gaze. Good. Not many are. Had she just whispered at him? Where was her pride going? Was it okay for her to continue a relationship with Xander or more information about Nate? That's the only real reason she could see herself staying friends with Xander. Ignoring the pull of his gaze and the arresting way his muscles flexed when he moved, Hannah could say that his scent was nice, but only if she was fine lying to herself and accepting the fact that there were more things pulling her toward him. A twinge in her stomach pushed her his direction with compelling strength. If Xander could find Nate, Hannah could finally ask her brother why she wasn't enough for him to stick around. Why did he have to leave her, when she'd lost everyone else? Two. Chapter 6 Xander Was Xander technically lying when he said he didn't know a Nate Rourke? He didn't know Nathan as Nate. He only knew him as Nathan Rourke. In fact, the few times he'd tried calling his friend Nate, he'd been snapped at and told he went by Nathan. Somehow Xander had to learn to keep his mouth shut around Hannah. Not only had he lied to her, but now he had to come up with information on Nathan without giving away who Xander really was and why he was really at Bella Acres. Xander doubted Hannah would accept that he'd done everything in his power just to meet her. She seemed more pragmatic than that. Sadly, he was starting to think he might have ruined his chances before he'd even begun. The whole plan and idea had seemed a whole lot smarter when he'd been driving there. Heck. Even as he'd concocted the entire scheme all alone in his huge house with visions of a large family and the anecdotes Nathan had shared when they'd been together. Xander had to keep his hopes up. When Hannah fell in love with him, Xander would worry about telling her who he was. What woman would turn down the chance to be with a multi-millionaire? Especially once she already loved him? Obviously, he had no firm foundations in the matters of the heart. There weren't a lot of options on his ranch. Silver spoons, and the closest town was comprised of six hundred or so people, and no one his age had stuck around. The bar was the best place to hang out, and Nathan had gone there regularly, which was how he'd become an unwitting matchmaker. Money or not, Xander feared Hannah wouldn't forgive him about knowing where her brother was and not telling her. Part of him hoped Hannah was the type of woman who wasn't interested in money. He wanted her to want him for him, but how could she know him when everything he was showing her was a lie? Another part of him hoped she was the type of woman in love with the idea of her and family. If she was, then she'd understand the appeal of traveling all the way across the large state of Montana and getting hired in a job he paid over a hundred other men to do at his own huge ranch just to meet the trails. The Montana trails had no idea how truly special they were. Hannah finished the chickens and left him to go inside with a mumbled goodnight. If nothing else, he had to end that day on a good note. He took a deep breath and strode across the yard to the back door. He had to fix the mistake he'd made. Xander pulled his hat off again, playing with the brim as he approached the back door. He knocked, waiting for Drake to answer. Drake arched an eyebrow when he swung open the door. I thought you'd be out relaxing with the other men, Xander. His implication was clear, my home isn't for the men to come to. Xander had the same rules at his ranch and he respected them. But this needed to be done. Yes, sir. I just wanted to make sure I first apologized for any indiscretions earlier. I certainly wasn't trying to, he craned his head until Stephanie was in view. He exhaled. You need to hear this, too, ma'am. Xander waited until Stephanie had moved into his line of view and he didn't have to manipulate his body to see her. I didn't mean to be untoward to your fiancé, to you, ma'am. That wasn't my intention. I thought the other woman was your wife. 
He nodded. He couldn't tell them anymore and he didn't know what else to be said. I'm sorry for the discomfort or awkwardness I might have caused. Drake laughed, glancing at Stephanie with a tenderness in his eyes. Don't worry, Xander. I appreciate the apology. It takes a certain kind of a man to admit when he's made a mistake. I don't blame you for flirting. She's gorgeous and one of a kind. If it happens again. Though, Drake cocked his head to the side, the promise evident even with his good, natured tone. There wouldn't be a third chance and there'd probably be a solidly thrown punch to finish it. I respect that. Thank you. Xander nodded, leaving them to their evening. All he had to do now was get Hannah to fall in love with him so he could quit lying and get back to respecting himself. Chapter 7 Hannah Moonlight spilled across her floor, shadows shifting and elongating where the rug sprawled across the wooden slats. The light was enough to fill the room with a dim silvery cast. She'd closed her door long before when she'd come upstairs. After changing into her pajamas, she'd opened the blinds and flipped off the lamp by her bed, welcoming the moon to glow through the glass. Hannah lay on her bed, staring at the white rectangle of the envelope in her fingers. The light wasn't bright enough to read her name or the logo of the Seattle Culinary Institute, but she didn't need to be able to read that part. As long as she left the light off, she wouldn't be able to read the inside contents. She still hadn't opened the flap yet. She didn't want to. She couldn't breathe. In all honesty, even as nervous as she'd been with Xander, she'd rather go back outside and talk to him a little longer. Maybe they could talk about more uncomfortable topics. He disappeared after they spoken. She'd gone inside and peeked out the window to find him gone from where she'd left him. She wasn't sure if she expected him to stand around or something, but she hadn't expected him to ghost away in seconds. She couldn't help but want to ask him more about where he came from and find out more about him. Of course, she blamed that desire and curiosity on the fact that he might have more information about Nate. Wasn't that what she wanted most? There was something magnetic about Xander. Not just the charm in his smile or the easy way he spoke to her, it was something more. Shaking her head, Hannah had to remember she wasn't interested. She had to keep reminding herself of that. Being friends with Xander was okay, good even. Thoughts of Nate had occupied her mind for far too long. Another route to contact him had opened with Xander's arrival and she couldn't help but hope and that unnerved her. Hope wasn't good if she couldn't control it. Hope would only end up hurting her when it was dashed. But if she wanted to let some hope in, she needed to admit her attraction to Xander and protect herself from it. Nothing good could come from something with a ranch hand. If she wanted to pursue the line of information on Nate through Xander, then she would have some kind of relationship with Xander. That was unavoidable and something she had to acknowledge and prepare for. Plus, she kind of felt bad that she was only pursuing anything with Xander because of what he might know about Nate. Did that make her a bad person? Was she leading Xander on? Laying there, thinking of Nate always brought her back to thoughts of her mother. What would mom say about all of it? Would she agree it was okay to use Xander for information? She might be disappointed in Hannah for treating someone else like that. Hannah missed her mom, more than she would even admit to herself in the quiet of the night. When her parents had died, she'd been young. Stephanie and Nate had stepped in and finished raising her but she'd always longed for that connection with an older woman and Emma had fulfilled that role for a little while. Nate leaving hurt almost as bad as when her parents died and when Emma died. Hannah wasn't sure how much more loss she could handle. If she let herself care for Xander and he left, because he would, she wouldn't have much left inside of her to recover and move on. Because moving on was all she'd done since she was young. Right then, she had the chance to move on. She didn't have grief holding her back or pushing her forward. Any changes she made would be made without any emotional entrapment. She had the chance to make something of herself. A well of hope rushed through her and she felt in the pit of her chest that the envelope held her acceptance letter. She needed to get into the school. She needed to get out of Clearwater County. She had to be able to escape the claustrophobia of small, town life and her role as the single youngest cousin. Questions from her family about when was it going to be her turn grew stale long ago. Hannah sat up flipping on the lamp. No more waiting. She had to face the possibilities in that small envelope. Excitement quickened her breathing and she ripped into the top. 
The rustling and crinkling of paper filled the room as she pulled out the single sheet of paper and unfolded it. The words didn't read right for an acceptance. She blinked as she read over them again. Why were they sorry to inform her? Regret? The letter was riddled with form. Letter. Regret. She'd been rejected. No. Wait. Blinking. Hannah murmured as she turned the page over to check the back for the real note. But the paper was blank. The front. The part under her name. How could they reject her? She had solid grades, and she'd filled everything out. She couldn't breathe. Why? Why wasn't she good enough for anything? For anyone? Pressures from being unable to escape pushed around her. She crumpled the letter in her hand, ignoring the sharp points of the thick paper as she crushed it. Standing, Hannah pulled on a flannel shirt over her sweatpants and tea, shirt and rushed from the room. She needed to breathe and under her sister's roof. She couldn't, not right then. Not when everything was against her. The fingers of moonlight were stronger, larger, more chilling in the evening air. She had no idea what time it was. The high point of the glowing orb confirmed it was much later than normal and she should be sleeping, but she couldn't. Not when her dreams had been stripped away. Hannah blinked back tears. She pushed through the gate, kicking the stubborn wood and rushing through the small opening. She cursed when her shirt caught on a nail and tore, the rending of fabric almost as loud as her whisper. The dark hid the endearing parts of the garden and it seemed like even the raspberry bushes loomed above her to intimidate and not console. She didn't need to get far inside the garden. Even the plants didn't need to be comforting right then. She just had to get out of the house and get some fresh air. She flopped onto the rolling utility stool she used for weeding. The garden was hers. No one else wanted anything to do with it. She could pretend for a few minutes that it was her home. Bella Acres was becoming less and less like her actual home and more and more like a prison with an indeterminable sentence. There was no end in sight. Angry tears rolled down her cheeks. She didn't even bother wiping them away. What was the point? No one was there to see them. She leaned over, resting her elbows on her knees and placing her face in her hands. What was she going to do? Hannah didn't want to stay there. She needed out. How was she going to get out? She had nowhere to go. Why are you crying? Xander's voice was low, as if he cherished the quiet of the night more than he worried about what was bothering her. He was close, his voice husky and intimate. Hannah jerked her head back, looking up at him. Where had he come from? She glanced around, suddenly conscientious that she had tears streaking her cheeks. Um, where did you come from? The gate hadn't squeaked announcing his arrival and she had no idea if he was in there before her or not. She hadn't taken the time to check. She'd assumed she was alone in her garden. It was her garden. He squatted to take a seat on a stump she'd covered in moss and surrounded with rocks in a project that was taking close to forever. She didn't care that he sat on her project. Not when the fact that he was there meant more than the whole plan behind the garden project. Xander tilted his head her way. Loosely lacing his fingers and dangling his hands between his knees. I needed some air. A bunkhouse of snoring men takes some getting used to. His hat cast a shadow across his face, hiding if he was joking or not. You didn't answer my question. Why are you crying? His persistence combined with the intimacy of the night emboldened Hannah. Because, did she tell him? Lulled by the quiet and the dark, she gave in to the anonymity of the moment. Plus, she didn't have anyone to talk to. My dream is to get out of here. Xander tilted his head to the side. Why? Where would you go? I want to be a chef. I need to go to school to do that, but that's what I want. Hannah had never told anyone, not one person. She'd once written a letter to Nate and told him, but she'd never mailed it. Letters were hard to send without an address. A mild note of alarm traced Xander's words. So, stay here or, what? Where would you go? Hannah crossed her arms over her chest. She was suddenly on the defensive which was exactly what she didn't want to be. And why not? Nate left. Why can't I? She waved her hand in the air, then retucked it in the crook of her elbow. Xander leaned closer, his calm unflappable. So, you're crying because, the unfinished statement hung there waiting for completion. 
The intensity of his gaze was felt more than seen, especially in the dark. Hannah sighed. She would have to say it out loud and make it real. Because I applied to a culinary school in Seattle and they rejected me. My dream is gone. Like that. She snapped her fingers and dropped her gaze. That doesn't sound like much of a dream. Xander's tone turned flippant and he leaned back, crossing his arms. Hannah jerked her gaze up. It might not be your dream, but it's mine. How dare he judge her and what she wanted? He shrugged. Is being a chef really your dream? If you can give it up, like that, he snapped his fingers in imitation. How much does it really mean to you? The challenge in his tone bit at the silence of the garden. Hannah shook her head. You don't understand. I can't get in. He obviously had never been rejected before or didn't understand what it meant. She might have to speak slower and be more clear next time. Not that there would be a next time. Ah. Uh, I see. This school is the only one in the world. Yeah, that would be tough. He nodded, the shadow moving across his face. Confused, Hannah blinked and shook her head. No, I'm not saying that. What was he getting at? Why wasn't he listening to her? He lifted his hand, resting his finger on his chin. Okay, is it that once you apply, that's it? You can't apply for school with them ever again? The increased shadows under his hat irritated her more and she jiggled her leg to expel some of her frustration. Um. What was he getting at? Hannah pursed her lips and narrowed her eyes. Xander moved closer, scooting until his knees almost touched hers. The thing is, Hannah, if you really want something, you have to go get it or it won't be worth it to lose. All taunting left his tone leaving behind a soft thrill as he spoke. Hannah was lost in the moment. His nearness and the empowering words that he all but whispered enraptured her. She could feel his body heat from his knees ere her hands rested on her legs. He was telling her to go after her dream. Not that she was ridiculous or that her dream was ridiculous, but that she hadn't even begun to chase it. He was right. He was absolutely right. Something in the way he didn't put her dream down flipped the fuzziness in her stomach. She didn't think too hard. He had to be interested, right? She leaned forward, pressing her lips to his, fast and furious. But she was painfully inexperienced and she was off, center, kissing him, but not. After a short second of kissing her back, Xander pushed her softly away from him. Now, wait a minute. A dash of disappointment colored his words. Heat flooded Hannah's face. She didn't care if he could see her blushing or not. Um, but. I thought. I'm sorry. Why was she apologizing? What was she doing? Heat covered her entire body with embarrassed shame. What was she doing? No, don't apologize. Xander reached across the short space between them and rested his hand on hers. Honey, you just met me. This isn't you. He'd called her honey and said it wasn't her all in the same breath. Hannah jerked upright and yanked her fingers free from his. You don't know anything about me. His gall was unmitigated. Her anger spurred on by her humiliation. Xander held up a hand in the dark. Exactly. I don't. So, why are you kissing me? When the time is right for us, we'll kiss. But not until we're ready. And certainly not in a dark garden where I can't see your face. The confidence that they would kiss again astounded Hannah. She blinked rapidly and her lips parted in disbelief. No. We won't kiss again. That was a mistake I won't make again. Hannah kicked the stool back as she stood and returned to the house in a huff. She refused to look back, but she didn't need to to feel his eyes following her exit. Chapter 8 Xander, what game was Hannah playing? Did she throw her tempting little self at most of the men that showed even the slightest interest in her? She probably had every man there wrapped around her delicate fingers. Jealousy was a hard feeling to shake when he experienced the warmth of her sweet, closed, mouth kiss. Her boldness and then innocence mixed together for a heady combination. Finding her in tears had worried him until she'd spilled her secrets. Xander didn't like the thought of her leaving. There had been a lot of bombshells dropped that evening. Her dreams didn't match the type of girl Nathan had claimed his youngest sister to be. In fact, a lot of what Nathan had said was skewed. Xander had expected some things to be different, but not the most important. 
Not the woman he wanted to fall for. Not that he wasn't in danger of losing his heart. He'd already made up his mind to love her, but he'd expected a timid, shy woman and he'd had to convince himself that that was the type of woman he needed. Instead of a lost sister looking to find a husband, he'd found a woman determined to break free from the restraints of a role she didn't want to play anymore. The bold dreamer Hannah was turning out to be might gain the upper hand in taking Xander's heart from him before he was ready. But first Xander had to get over his disillusionment. She wanted different things than he did. She wanted to leave her family behind like Nathan had. She wanted more than small town life. Xander enjoyed the small town he lived in. He liked living on his ranch and seeing only a handful of people any given day. But Hannah, she wanted out. She wanted more. Did he blame her? Chapter 9 Hannah Hannah couldn't shake the feeling of being rebuffed and embarrassed after throwing herself at him and kissing him. Her skin crawled at her recollection of the pitiful action she'd taken. Of course, Xander had been right. That wasn't her. She was shy when it came to men, but she couldn't help it. He was the first person to have a real conversation with her and not treat her with kid gloves. He'd made valid points without lecturing to her. He'd challenged her when she felt there was nothing she could do. He just redirected her thought process so she could think about what exactly it was she wanted and if she wanted it badly enough. She could like him. No, wait. She wasn't interested in anything like that. Plus, to be honest, he hadn't wanted to kiss her. He said they'd kiss at some point, but not then. Hannah didn't need it spelled out any clearer than that. As far as Xander was concerned, he was a means to an end. The end was getting information on Nate. That's all Xander could be to her. It didn't matter how green his eyes were or how the clenching of his jaw was distracting even in the dark shadows of the night. In fact, the darkness had helped Hannah save some of her dignity. She wasn't sure how fine she'd be if she'd been able to see pity or disappointment in his expression. Hearing it was one thing, seeing it would be devastating. She slept on what he'd said and on his rejection. Or rather, she tried to sleep on it, but she didn't get much rest, if any. Tossing and turning all night with their conversation replaying over and over in her mind kept her from really being able to rest. The next morning dawned early and sooner than Hannah was ready for. Could she be honest enough with herself to do what Xander had said? If going to culinary school was really her dream, she would have to. She waited until Stephanie left the house, sometime after breakfast. Once the house was empty, she grabbed her wrinkled rejection letter and sat at the table with the house phone. Dialing the admissions office, she waited for the ringing to be answered. A knot tightened in her stomach. Seattle Institute of Culinary Learning. The woman already sounded bored and they hadn't even had a chance to talk. Um, hello, this is Hannah Rourke. I applied for admissions and I just got a rejection letter. Can I ask why so I can do better on the next application? Hannah chewed on her bottom lip, afraid they would say she just wasn't good enough. Obviously, that was implied with the rejection letter. She clenched her hand on the phone, longing to hang up the call before she subjected herself to more punishment. But her determination to chase down her dream held the phone to her ear. Hello, Hannah. I just pulled your file and it looks like you were placed on our waiting list, but you are kind of far down there. We had quite a few applicants and we just based most of them on a first. Come, first. Serve basis with regards to acceptance after they got through the screening process. It wasn't anything you did wrong with your application. In fact, we would love for you to apply next year. The woman's voice was pleasant and sincere, alleviating a lot of Hannah's concern. The timing was off. That was all. Hannah ended the call and then stared at the rejection paper. Xander had asked if they were the only school out there. They weren't. They couldn't be. She chose them because she saw an ad featuring them in a food magazine. She didn't want to wait another year. She didn't want to wait another second. Grabbing the laptop, she searched on a national level for other culinary schools. If she was willing to move to Seattle for school, anywhere was possible really. The national list that came up placed the next one closest to her in North Dakota, close to the eastern Montana border. Eastern Montana. Where the rumors over the years had placed Nate. She'd never understood why he would make his way to the plains. He was a mountain man, a cowboy who could travel the trails and ride among the trees, rain, snow, or shine. He would be bored where the grasses stretched further than the skies. Unless he was trying to escape everything green and good in the world because of what it reminded him of. 
but this school was located near there in Merston, so close to the border, they probably had some residents of the town actually living in Montana. Was that school's location a sign? She had given up on Nate almost a year ago. He'd been as good as dead to her, except even worse than death. It was like a bad divorce. She couldn't mourn her brother because she wasn't sure he was dead. She wasn't sure where he was. She had to force herself to stop thinking about him and that was harder than if she watched him go into the ground. Her grief over Emma had faded. She missed her sister, in, law, but she knew where she was. Hannah knew what had happened and that Emma wasn't out there wandering in pain. No, that was Nate. Giving up on her brother had been the hardest thing she probably would ever have to do. And she didn't want to go through that again. But what if she didn't have to? What if she could find him again and at least ask him what she needed to ask? If she could get closure of some kind, she'd be able to put the never ending search to rest. Xander's appearance on the ranch and the new location of a school seemed to be pushing her toward her brother. Was it safe to hope? Hoping meant more than just waiting for answers. Hoping meant she might see him again. What if she found him in eastern Montana? What would she do? She wouldn't need him to move back to Bella Acres. If she got into the school, they'd be by each other. She wouldn't have to be alone. He wouldn't have to be alone. Hannah was confident she was different enough that her presence wouldn't have to be a painful reminder of what he'd lost and left behind. A large part of her hoped he was wishing and praying to see family again, too. What would Nate do, if he saw her again? Small burgeoning hope blossomed in her chest and she wondered what Xander would say about her progress that morning. She would be cooking dinner later that day for the men. Stephanie would be making the pancake and sausage breakfast. Easy enough. Stephanie had said she would take care of breakfast on her own. Hannah couldn't wait to get Xander to the side and ask him his opinion. She also needed to apologize for her behavior. Kissing him had been untoward of her and she didn't want to give him the wrong impression. Getting him alone at breakfast wasn't happening. He was surrounded by other ranch hands and Hannah didn't feel comfortable asking him if she could speak with him alone. But seeking him out at dinner time was next to impossible. He came in and got a plate and she had to look away to reposition a ribeye on the grill. When she looked back to see where he'd sat, she couldn't find him. He'd disappeared, plate and all. He hadn't even smiled at her when he'd seen her. She hadn't thought she'd done anything that bad. Maybe Xander didn't know what a mistake was or maybe Hannah didn't know how to let things go. Stephanie sidled up beside her, holding her plate and scrunching her nose. I know, I'm trying to keep the weight off for the wedding, but you make the best baked potatoes and steak. I just, she shrugged, impishly grinning at Hannah. You know I just need to eat everything you make. It's your fault I'm getting fat. Hannah laughed, shaking her head. You're far from fat, sis. And Hannah wasn't lying. Stephanie stayed in shape by working hard with her husband and working the ranch. She ate, but rarely had time to snack. Well, if I don't stop eating with the guys, I'm going to be rolling down the aisle. Her humor dimmed and a shadow crossed her eyes. She thanked Hannah when a steak was placed on Stephanie's plate, but her teasing stopped. What's wrong? And don't say nothing. I can see something is bothering you. Hannah flipped the steaks on the bottom rung of the grill and then turned her full attention to Stephanie. Stephanie sighed and tried to smile. I know it's stupid. I tell you all the time to just drop the Nate issue, but. I can't. I want him at the wedding. I want him walking me down that aisle. I know it's awful, but I do. She blinked back tears and rubbed her lips together. After a second, she whispered, don't worry about it. I'm not trying to be selfish. I'll feel better once the whole thing is over. Hannah nodded, because she didn't know what else to say. How did she reply to that? Stephanie didn't need to be told that her dreams of having her brother walk her down the aisle were stupid. Because they weren't. People's dreams weren't stupid. They had value. Maybe Nate didn't know how important it was to Stephanie. Maybe he didn't care. Either way. He had to find out. He had to have the chance to choose between letting his sister down again or showing up just once for someone who loved him. Stephanie collected her steak and nodded her thanks as she wandered back to a table she shared with Drake when she ate with the hands. Hannah stared after her, turning back to the grill and pulling out her phone. Enough was enough. How long until they all gave up wishing on a star that Nate would grow up and be present?
Her thumb flew over the small set of buttons as she typed up a text to her oldest brother. Nate, it's been a while since I messaged you. Stephanie is getting married in less than two weeks. I'll send the date and details. You should know, the only thing she wants is for you to be there. You. You have to walk her down the aisle. She needs that. Dad can't do it. You need to. Don't let her down. Hannah was done walking on eggshells around Nate or anyone else. They would either take her as she was or not at all. She'd sent him texts before, but nothing quite so demanding. Nothing so adamant that he'd step up in ways he'd fallen short before. If she couldn't get Nate to help Stephanie, then she didn't deserve to find him. Chapter 10 Xander The next few days passed in a blur of hard work and distraction. While he kept to himself and followed the directions Drake gave the crew, Xander made an effort to stay away from the house. That didn't save him from Hannah's presence in the bunkhouse to cook meals. Avoiding the kitchen was hard when he walked by the door or the windows and saw her bent head through the glass. Or when she laughed at something Stephanie was saying while putting together one of the many delicious meals she made. He could see why she dreamt of being a chef. Her skill surpassed many of the chefs at restaurants he'd been to. The return of the ranch's cook made it easier to avoid Hannah and Xander breathed easier knowing she wouldn't be in the bunkhouse. Xander wasn't sure what to do. Maybe he hadn't picked the right girl or the right family. If that was true, then why did the thought of abandoning his own dream hurt so dang much? A few days of successfully avoiding Hannah later, afternoon heat wouldn't dissipate until evening fell which wasn't more than a couple hours away but felt like a week. Xander wiped at his brow with his forearm, twisting and untwisting the wire he'd been working with all afternoon. The wire was almost as annoying as the sounds coming from the front of the property. Laughter and car doors slamming filled the afternoon air drawing Drake from the work in the barn early. Glancing up at the sound of a very large diesel engine, Xander and two of the other hands, he hadn't bothered learning their names, hung up the ropes and wire they worked with on a hook in the back of the supply shed. Pulling off his gloves, Xander followed the men to the front. Curiosity finally got the best of him. Xander had gone out of his way to stay toward the back of the barn and bunkhouse or out on the property for the last few days. Avoiding Hannah had become some kind of game and he wasn't sure why he was doing it. Maybe because he was embarrassed he'd turned her down. Or maybe because he'd been stupid and turned her down. Or maybe, and most likely the truth, he didn't have any information about Nathan that would be okay to share. No matter what he did, he'd end up giving away his secrets before he was ready. He couldn't have her find out who he really was until she'd fallen for him. She'd never love him, if she thought he was a liar. The scariest part he wasn't ready to address was the fact that she might stop loving him once she found out he'd lied. He wasn't a liar. Not normally. The whole situation was turning him into someone he wasn't. Cookie had returned and his sunny disposition and tendency to love cooking anything Mexican made Xander wish he could offer him a year's worth of bonuses to get him to cook at the Silver Spoons. The two men left through the front of the barn, but Xander hung back. He didn't even want to peek outside to see what was going on. He'd never been so insecure in his life and there he was, nervous he would run into Hannah and even more worried he would miss out on time with her. Cookie stopped beside Xander, clapping his hand on Xander's shoulder and grinning. We've been invited to eat with the family. This is rare, so go get cleaned up, amigo. I'm going to go help them set up and see if Miss Hannah needs my help with any of the food. She's been cooking all afternoon. Cookie who Xander had learned was actually named Juan but preferred to be called Cookie because his own dad was a camp cookie, patted Xander on his back and passed him. The man's thick black hair had been braided neatly and fell down between his shoulder blades under a bright orange bandana tied around his head. Do, rag style. Xander genuinely liked the man who worked for Drake. He stared after him. How much would it take to convince Cookie to follow him back? How attached to their chef was Drake and Stephanie and would they be bitter about losing him and Hannah? Or would they look at it as gaining a brother and cousin? For reasons Xander couldn't explain, he wanted them to like him. He'd never wanted anything so bad. Taking their ranch chef probably wasn't the best way to gain their esteem. Xander finished hanging the rope and washed his hands at the barn sink. He brushed down his clothes and dusted off his hat. He was probably a mess but judging from the ringing bell coming from the house, he didn't have time to shower and dress to impress. He had a lot of explaining to do to Hannah for staying away from her for the last few days. If she'd even noticed. 
Well, whether she had noticed or not, Xander had. An anxious ache started in his stomach that he was going to get to see her any second. Long strides carried Xander to the front of the barn, toward the house. Set up around the side, close to the garden, a collection of picnic tables had been gathered. White linen cloths waved softly in the breeze around the legs of the tables like skirts. Light strung along the poles of the garden lit up the afternoon which was fading to the encroaching evening. In the gradual dimming, warm glowing lights spilled from the house windows and the laughter and voices sent a shiver over Xander. People, older than in the picture Xander had taken from Nathan but still recognizable, spotted the lawn in clusters with others, mingling amongst the tables and along the sides of the yard. Dressed casually even down to jeans and tea, shirts, they could have stepped from the photos Nathan had shown Xander over the last few months. Smiling and talking, the Montana trails added more dynamics to their existence in Xander's imagination. They became four, dimensional with their actual presence. His chest clenched. A family. His parents had been gone a couple years and he'd always been a single child. Loneliness had spurred the trip to find something else. Living on the ranch with Tommy and all the men who worked for him had helped stave off the depression loneliness could bring on, but he didn't want to rely on his employees for companionship. They couldn't be comfortable with him. Xander wanted to be in a family. Not just any sized family, a big family. He wanted to belong and laugh and look forward to family gatherings and Christmas letters. Finding out about who was doing what and seeing the growth in each other were things he'd always dreamt about. He just wanted to feel like he wasn't alone. Moving to the outskirts of the lawn, Xander watched the group as they interacted with each other. Dark, haired men with blonde, haired women, blonde men with dark, haired women, dark, haired men and women, a woman with blue and pink in her hair, and a Native American couple made up the majority of the attendees. They laughed and talked in small groups which called out sporadically to each other, commenting and then going back to their conversations. As the crew joined in the gathering, the family made room for them, engaging them as if they belonged there. And honestly, their crew did because they were open about what they were. They were hired by Drake as ranch hands to help run the ranch. They didn't have ulterior motives to win the heart of the youngest and join the family. They didn't have secret lives as one of the richest men in Montana who could probably buy a family, instead of trying to secretly win one over. No, the crew fit in. Xander didn't fit. Xander had never felt like more of a fraud. He wasn't one of them but he wasn't one of the crew either. He averted his gaze from the pure setting in front of him and glanced around the rest of the area. Along the side of the house, beside the back steps and under the railing of the deck, long tables had been set up with buffet, style stainless, steel serving dishes and lanterns hung to light the way. Hannah's curvy shape and long, braided hair stood out as she worked by herself, not talking with anyone or standing with a man. No one approached her or sought her out. She worked busily at the table, glancing once or twice toward her family, but then looked back to her work. She was alone, as if she, too, didn't belong. Fixing that became Xander's mission instead of dwelling on what he couldn't change. Making his way across the lawn toward her, Xander smiled dismissively toward the two people who moved as if to speak to him. They were friendly and he was more than interested in getting to know them, but not right then. He had to take the chance open to him to strike up a conversation with the woman he was going to marry. He moved up beside her, leaning in to grab the next picture from the collection she was moving from one of the tables to the other. She jumped, startled by his presence when she turned. Something crossed her gaze that bordered on suspicion, but, to Xander's relief, she shook it off. Hesitantly, she smiled. Um, hi. Unable to stay away from her, the breeze moved around her face making stray strands of hair dance around the curve of her jaw and slant of her neck. Hi. Xander didn't care if Nathan was wrong about Hannah. Xander was attracted to her and there was something between them he couldn't deny. She came with the family and that meant she had a lot of value. But even more importantly, she lit something inside him he'd never thought would be possible. He wasn't going to let that go. Carefully, Hannah placed lemon wedges in the pitchers of ice water. She licked her lips glanced at the other people standing around and then spoke cautiously, like Xander might run away or something. I'm taking your advice. She couldn't smother the joy spreading across her face in a smile. Xander furrowed his brow. Oh. My advice? He couldn't remember much of their conversation besides the fact that she'd kissed him and he just wanted her to do it again. But he'd meant what he said, 
They needed to know each other better. He wasn't going to cheapen what he wanted with Hannah. He wouldn't disrespect her that way. Call him old-fashioned, but that was no way to treat his future. If he'd been alone, he would laugh. He didn't want to cheapen their relationship, but there he was lying about who he was. He couldn't wait to tell her the truth and get the weight off his shoulders and his heart. Yeah, silly. I'm going after what I want. She placed a pitcher and then turned back to Xander. Nate would be surprised. She blinked back the sparkling in her eyes. Xander drew away. What did she know? The mention of Nate threw a wrench in things. He didn't want to lie about that, but how was he going to confess everything to her now? His chances would flush down the drain. He was getting drawn tight into a web he'd created. He hadn't thought things through and it was becoming more and more evident. She stopped setting out the dishes and turned to look lovingly over her family, her expression tinged with regret. He left and never really saw me, you know? He's only ever known me as his little sister. He didn't see me grow up while he was so wrapped in the stress around Emma's sickness, and then her death. She nodded toward the group. He missed out on all of this. We went from nine cousins to so many more. We even have good friends that aren't technically family but that we consider closer than blood. That had to be hard. Xander didn't look at the family, he watched the empathetic woman before him. The one Nathan had missed out on knowing. Lifting her chin, Hannah shrugged. Nate took the loss bad. He left us because he couldn't handle it. Of course, it's been hard for him. I wasn't trying to say it wasn't. Xander lowered his voice and stepped closer to Hannah. I meant hard for you, Hannah. She didn't move away from him. She quieted, matching his tone, sadness moving to soften her features. Yeah, it was. I've changed. I wanted Nate to see me for so long and then I realized I wasn't proud of who I'd become. I wasn't even sure who I was. But now. I'm not little Hannah anymore. I've had to survive, you know? I've had to figure things out for myself and I don't want this right now. Not that I don't want it ever, I just. I need a break from it, too. Relief flooded through him that she still wanted what her family represented. Xander smiled, understanding more than she knew. Yeah, I get it. He did. He'd only looked at the Montana trails from Nathan's perspective. He was starting to see the family was filled with dynamic individuals who happened to make up a unit. He'd thought of them as a unit instead of individuals. As he filled a plate with the rest of the Montana Trail's cousins and sat amongst them, Xander had the sensation that was the way things could be. He could sit beside Hannah because that was where he belonged and the men would ask him questions about ranching or he'd ask them questions about, whatever, because they'd be family. He firmed his decision to continue taking his own advice and go after what he wanted. He just had to figure out how. Chapter 11 Hannah. Hannah glanced at Xander throughout the evening. She couldn't help it. There was something between them she couldn't define and the link drove her nuts. She'd opened up to him about things she'd never said to anyone. She had never met anyone that was so easy to talk to like Xander and she had a feeling that when he said he understood, he really did. He was someone she could trust and Hannah didn't have a lot of that in her life. She had trusted that her life would be normal with parents always there and they died. Emma had come into her life and Hannah had trusted that Emma was going to be okay. She'd trusted the medical professionals to save her sister, in, law, who had become like a surrogate mother. Emma had died. She'd trusted Nate to always be there for her and he'd left. Embarrassing herself with Xander with the inappropriate kiss hadn't been the end of the world. He hadn't even brought it up which made her feel even safer with him. She could trust him with her mistakes. Another plus was that she normally was looked over because Drake was the boss or Stephanie was prettier or whatever reason there was. Xander wasn't doing anything to ignore her and the attention was nice. Her cousins would never agree to let her date a ranch hand, even if she did admit her attraction to him. If she couldn't admit it to herself, she certainly wouldn't utter a word about it to her cousins. As the other men broke down the tables, Hannah carried some empty platters inside. Xander followed her, carrying in half. Filled pitchers and looking around the large kitchen. Hannah placed the dish on the counter and turned, taking the pitchers from Xander. Her fingers grazed his, sending a tingling awareness through her. Like she needed help being aware of him. She was already very aware of him. What she wanted was to not be aware of him. Was that possible? Could he be less of a gentleman? Could he be less trustworthy? 
something, anything that would make him less appealing. At that point, anything was acceptable. If he came through with information on Nate, he'd be more like a hero in her eyes and then her heart certainly wouldn't be safe. That terrified her. I hope you have a good night, Hannah. Xander's green eyes twinkled as he studied her face. He leaned over, careful not to invade her space, but also close enough she could feel his presence and not ignore him. Would he kiss her? How well would they have to know each other before it would be okay? She almost sighed at the sight of his dark lashes and deep green rim of his irises focused on her. He could hypnotize her in seconds. Hannah worked on breathing normally. She nodded, her voice breathless no matter how hard she tried to be normal. You, too, Xander. Except she wasn't going to sleep. Not that night. Not when she had so many what, ifs running through her mind, so many possibilities for different versions of futures that conflicted with each other. Xander didn't need to know that his interest in her stood in the way of her future plans. He didn't need to know that she didn't want to be a friend, but she also wanted to know about Nate and, what if she wanted more than just a platonic relationship? What if getting to know Xander made her choose something besides the dreams she desperately longed for? If someone had asked if she slept that night, a simple no would have put it mildly. Hannah rubbed her eyes at the table stifling her yawn as Stephanie left the table after breakfast and headed outside, muttering something about helping Drake. Yeah, Hannah had seen the kitchen. Stephanie didn't want to do the dishes or finish cleaning up from the night before. Thankfully for Hannah, she didn't normally mind and that meant Stephanie would leave and not overhear what Hannah had planned. Hannah would return to clean up as soon as she made the calls she wanted to make. Seeing Xander the night before had emboldened her further on her course of action. Being afraid was okay. She had to believe her dream was worth facing fears and nerves. Pulling out the paper with the information she'd gathered on her last computer session, Hannah called the Culinary Institute of North Dakota, picking at the cuticle of her thumb while the phone rang. She could still hang up. She didn't have to commit to anything. Her stomach was nervous like she expected her brother to answer the other end of the line. Culinary Institute. This is Amy. The woman was friendly from the beginning. Her voice sounded like she was smiling already. Hannah's nerves faded. Hi, my name is Hannah Rourke. I was wondering about the application procedure and if you already have a waiting list for the fall? Might as well get those likelihoods out of the way from the beginning. Hi, Hannah. I'm so glad you called. We're getting ready to cut down to summer office hours, but this works out perfect. We actually are on a semester rotation so we take new students every six months. We're also a very small school, because unfortunately not a lot of people know about us or want to live in North Dakota. Her tinkling laugh brought out a chuckle in Hannah. Amy continued. That being said, we're offering daily tours and we're actually in the process of accepting applications right now. Do you have an email address? I can send you the application link. Once you complete the online application, you'll get an automated email with the tour schedule and another link to reserve your spot. We have multiple tours running through the next six to eight weeks. I'm sure you'll have plenty of options to choose from. Wow, thank you. That's a lot of information. Hannah relayed her email address. I look forward to your email. I'm sending it right now. I look forward to meeting you, Hannah. Amy hung up, leaving Hannah with an optimistic feeling growing inside her. She stared at the family picture Stephanie had put up from a year or so ago. All of the cousins had been present. Even Jareth had shown up when he didn't like pictures. The only one missing was Nate. That was it. Just Nate. He hadn't replied to her text, but then again, Hannah hadn't expected him to. Maybe she needed to talk to him in person. It was easy to ignore a text, not as easy face to face. Hope sprang inside her where it didn't belong. If things worked out at the school in Merston, did that mean she was meant to be over there? Maybe she was the one who would be able to bring Nate home. The youngest reeling in the oldest. Hannah leaned forward and rested her forehead on her forearms crossed on the table in front of her. Too bad she couldn't ask her mom what to do. Heaving herself up from her melancholic thoughts, Hannah gritted her teeth. She was determined. No more hiding behind the safety of Bella Akers and her family. She was going to get herself out. Pulling out the laptop. Hannah refreshed her email every 30 seconds until three minutes later when the email showed up from Amy at the CND. She opened it slowly, reading every word voraciously. 
the woman's enthusiasm screamed through her written words. Hannah was grinning by the time she had finished reading. The link at the bottom before the signature line would take her to the application page. She stared for a moment, her smile fading as excitement filled her. Don't think about it, Hannah, just do it. Clicking on the link, she filled out the application and hit submit. The complete ease of the entire process struck her as unfathomable. The last application she'd filled out had taken forever, by hand, and had required that she mail it in. Her email dinged while she studied the confirmation page. Tilting her head to the side, Hannah furrowed her brow. Had she already been rejected? At least it was faster. She pressed her lips together to smother her discouragement and clicked on the email. Instead, she'd received a confirmation of application receipt with the option to schedule a tour any time in the next two months. Two months. She could pick a time to visit the school and see what she thought. Sitting back, Hannah took a deep breath. When it felt right and things went smoothly, that's when they were meant to be. She had the feeling in her gut she was supposed to be on the eastern side of the state, that she was supposed to go to that school. She couldn't help the grin that spread across her face, aching in her cheeks. She couldn't tell her family yet, but she had to tell someone. She was so excited and didn't want to wait until her acceptance was a certainty. She couldn't break the news to her family until it was actually news to tell. Once she was accepted and she enrolled, nothing Stephanie said would be able to sway her. She'd deal with the financial aspects when that came, but she was a hard worker and she didn't mind working after school hours to pay tuition. What had she done? She wasn't even sure on funding yet. How would she ever be able to pay for school? She knew nothing about the area that the school was in, but she liked the attitude of the admissions officer and it was closer to where Nate was supposed to be. Taking a deep breath, she rallied her spirits internally. She could do it. If it was meant to be, what could go wrong? Hannah rushed outside, abandoning the dishes piling on the counter. She had to tell someone and right then, she had to tell Xander. The submitted application was almost like a successful hunt. She had to talk about it right then. She rushed out to the barn. Had Drake said where the men would be that day? She couldn't remember, but the barn would be a good place to start. A soft whistling called her deeper into the barn, closer to the animal stalls and the open paddock in the back. Hannah moved to the side of the doorway, watching as Xander moved lightly with a flat, nosed shovel from end, to, end swinging the load to the side onto the trailer with ease. Without a word, Hannah grabbed gloves and a shovel hanging on a hook beside the double, doors and moved in beside him. Smiling at the stuttering in his whistle, she mucked alongside him. His whistling continued but almost as if he was smiling. Side by side they finished the rest of the stall floor in about thirty minutes in companionable silence, except for the whistling and the occasional chuckle as they crossed paths. Panting lightly, they moved together and took a seat on one of the benches set to the side for boot securing. Pulling a handkerchief from his pocket, he handed it to her. I'm surprised you're out here. He looked her up and down, his shock evident. Why? You think girls can't work? Hannah pushed his bandana back to him and pulled the one she habitually carried in her back pocket. She wiped at her damp forehead, grinning. Of course, hard work wasn't going to dim her excitement. Instead, just being around him made her even more excited to tell him, the anticipation sweeter than anything. What if he made fun of her? She was nervous, even though she knew she had nothing to worry about. She could trust him. She had trusted him already. All she had to do was take the leap. Chapter 12 Xander Hannah obviously had something on her mind and she grew more pensive the longer they sat in quiet. Maybe she thought Xander was a sexist, which he wasn't. But how did he prove that? He rubbed his loose bandana across the back of his neck and then lifted his gaze to her. I'm not biased against women working, on the contrary. I find it refreshing. The only reason I was asking was because this is your home. Drake has people, like me, hired to do this stuff. Do you have to work out here? Do you mean, do I have money? Hannah huffed. Nope, I don't have money and this isn't my place. Not technically. It used to be my parents and then they died and left it to us and then Nate had to sell it and Drake bought it. It's not our family home anymore. I just live here. She slowed down and twisted her lips to the side then half, smiled. If I had my own place, though? 
I'd be out working, too. No one is going to take care of your home the same way you would. Xander agreed but he'd never voiced his sentiments and didn't bother hiding his amazement. What if you had more money than you'd ever need? Would you then? He wanted to give her everything he owned just to see another one of her smiles. Hannah full on snort, laughed in response. Not likely to ever happen, but yes, even then. Money shouldn't change people. It's as liquid as water, here today and then gone with the heat. She plucked at the collar of her shirt and moved it in and out to get air underneath the heavy material. She was nothing like Nathan had described, but Xander was beginning to get the impression she was so much more than the timid young woman her older but absent brother thought she was. Xander leaned forward, placing his elbows on his knees. Hey, do you want to go for a ride with me tonight? His question seemed to take her aback as she looked at him questioningly before she smiled. Okay. Of course we'll have to borrow some horses. I don't have any of my own. Is that going to be okay? Xander leaned closer, nudging Hannah with his shoulder and catching the scent of apple pie off her hair. Did she smell like home all the time or just after working hard enough to break a sweat? Loud bootsteps and male voices cut between them and Xander and Hannah jerked apart. Hannah jumped to her feet, fidgeting with her bandana and licking her lips as Drake and two of the hands walked in. Drake raised an eyebrow as he took in the scene. Maybe I need to add Hannah to my list of not available. If he was joking, the humor was severely lacking as the air chilled with his insistence. Hannah closed her eyes and shook her head, avoiding meeting Drake's eyes or Xander's. She stomped from the barn, her long dark hair slipping from her braid as she moved. Xander returned his gaze to Drake's face and shook his head. I'm not the one who needs to apologize this time, sir. Was he going to lose his job with that kind of a comment? Did Xander care? Drake shouldn't be able to minimize Hannah's emotions because he wanted to make a point. And since Drake would one day be family, Xander didn't think he would pull any punches. Drake needed to fix things with Hannah. He knew it and Xander made sure of it. Drake's comment was uncalled for, putting an inappropriate slant on Hannah's presence in the barn when neither Xander nor Hannah were guilty of anything. After all that, Xander realized Hannah never told him what she came out there to share. Chapter 13 Hannah, embarrassed about getting caught flirting with one of Drake's crew members, Hannah's embarrassment faded as excitement over the evening overtook everything else. She wasn't even as excited about a tour at CND as she was about going on a horse ride with Xander. What was wrong with her? She checked the wall clock as she passed it in the hallway. She only had a few hours until they were supposed to meet. If she could control her excitement, she'd try to stop herself from checking the time but only four times an hour. She'd have to check the clock to make sure she wasn't checking too often. Hannah found herself in the kitchen, anxiously tapping her fingers on the sides of her thighs as she walked. Stephanie turned, a glass of water in her hands. She smiled. Hey, Han, how's it going? Steph, can I ask you for a favor? Hannah came to a stop beside the counter, cutting off Stephanie's escape. Her sister shot her gaze around the room, she lowered her water to the counter and turned her head to the side. Um, yes? She held up a hand. But just so you know, I'm still not recovered from the last time I helped you pick raspberries. Not sure that's going to happen today. She pressed her lips together worriedly, narrowing her eyes in trepidation. Hannah laughed, slapping the counter. Stephanie. I just wanted to know if I could borrow treetop. Hannah chuckled again when Stephanie's relief forced an audible few from her lips. But now I know how much you hate helping me and I'll keep that in mind. Of course, you can take treetop. What are you taking her for? Stephanie sipped her water again, the task not demanding so she'd already moved on from the topic of the raspberries. Oh, I'm just going for a ride tonight. Thanks. Hannah turned on the ball of her foot and bounced upstairs to stress about what to wear on a horse ride that was both practical but attractive. Not that she was trying to impress anyone. Hannah was so nervous she couldn't eat dinner. Her knee jiggled up and down under the table as Drake glanced at her curiously over and over while he ate. As soon as they finished eating and it wasn't too soon for Hannah to rush out, she did exactly that. Saddling treetop didn't take very long and she found herself standing beside the front of the barn. The afternoon had gone fast and slow at the same time. The sun hadn't set yet, with the mountains slowing their descent. 
The softest pinks lit up the still blue sky. A soft nicker drew Hannah's attention to the side of her horse. Mount up and let's go. Xander had cleaned up, wearing a newly pressed shirt and a brushed hat. His jeans were well, stacked over dark, like, new books. He stood beside the horse he'd chosen with a comfortable stance and motioned toward her horse. Can I help you? Thank you, I can do it. His presence threw her off and she nodded jerkily. She mounted with little difficulty, using a step ladder set to the side of the barn doors. She waited for Xander to mount and nodded approvingly toward his ride. You chose Chester. She's a good girl. Be careful. She'll put you through your paces. The light brown mare was spirited without being a problem. She was a delight to ride. Yeah, she was the only one interested in going when I walked in. What's yours named? Xander and Hannah drew abreast of each other, their maras meandering at a loping pace. Hannah leaned forward and patted her russet brown mare's neck. This is Treetop. She's pretty fun. I share her with Stephanie. We're both too busy to take Treetop out every day, so we take turns. That's smart. Share the care and the horse gets used to multiple riders. I like it. Xander winked at Hannah. I brought dessert. I hope that's okay. I think that sounds great. I couldn't eat dinner. I was a little excited. Heat flooded her face, but she couldn't help telling him another one of her secrets, even though it was about him and he hadn't said anything like it to her. You must go out a lot, Hannah. This isn't anything fancy. He narrowed his gaze and twisted the reins around his hand. I'm sorry. I should have done something. I don't get around, if that's what you're thinking. Hannah jerked back. Had he just accused her of being loose? She was too surprised to be offended, yet. Xander shook his head, his gaze mortified. Not at all. I just realized I should have done something more, memorable for our first date. I don't want it to be our last. This is a date? Something tickled in Hannah's chest and she was no longer worried about being offended. A date. She'd thought of it as a date, but hadn't dared hope he thought the same thing. Xander grinned and reached back to pat the saddlebag softly. I certainly hope so. I don't make apple turnovers for just anyone. You bake? Being surprised by Xander was becoming a common thing and yet she should start expecting to be surprised. Pleasantly surprised. Someone was interested in her and not just anyone. A very good, looking, smart, strong, attractive man was interested in her. Did he think she was rich? Was that it? But she'd already told him she had no money. Bemused about the dating and what could possibly be interesting about her, Hannah rode with Xander in silence. After a bit, Xander spoke into the comfortable quiet between them. Why don't you lead? This is your territory. He motioned toward the narrowing trail which ran along the base of a hill covered in trees. The sun hadn't quite set completely with a full moon hanging low in the east. There was plenty of light to adapt to and Hannah was starting to enjoy the darker moments with Xander. She nodded and pulled ahead, still maintaining a leisurely pace. Over her shoulder, she called out, I'll take you to Nate and Emma's favorite place. The pond in the woods, she'd never taken anyone there and only went herself when she was so overcome with missing her brother and his wife that she needed to feel close to them. At the edge of the clearing they tied the maras to some saplings where the horses could lower their heads and munch on longer blades of grass. Fresh green growth covered the brush and trees they passed on their way to the water. Walking the rest of the way to the pond surrounded by boulders and grassy edges, Hannah was tempted to tap into the romantic ambience of the evening and reach out to hold Xander's hand. The way he reacted when she tried kissing him held her back. He was hard to read and not like other men, as far as she knew. At the edge of the pond, Xander stopped and stared at the clear, still water. It's gorgeous here. Makes me want to go for a dip. Yeah, no suits. And if I suggested we go in just our underwear, you'll freak out on me, right? Hannah nudged her toe against a small pile of pebbles. She couldn't believe she just said that, but it was true, right? She had a feeling he wasn't impressed with daring actions especially from her for some reason. Xander sidestepped to a large boulder with a flat top and sat down. He considered Hannah with a sober expression which darkened the green of his gaze. Look, I know these days girls think all a guy wants is, that. But I'm interested in you, what makes you tick? 
What traits you have? Do you want to get married and have kids? Do you like dogs or cats? Those types of things. Confused, Hannah blinked, her arms limp at her sides. She felt stupid and she didn't understand. But, why? Because there's no other reason to date than to look for the person you want to marry, be a partner with. Call me old, fashioned, but that's what I want, someone to come home to. I'm not willing to settle for anything less. He reached up and took one of Hannah's hands in his. I want to settle down. I'm not proposing marriage, but I want you to know I'm serious when I say I'm interested and what the end goal is for me. I'm not interested in flings or affairs. The intensity in his gaze would have transfixed her, if the promises in his words didn't scare her. Why, when she found one she actually liked and wanted to be around, did he have to want everything she'd given up wanting years ago? What if she gave in? Would he be interested after they were together a while? Interested didn't mean forever and she was done waiting. She soaked up the sensation of his touch, but didn't speak. She couldn't. He'd scared the Hannah right out of her. Chapter 14, Xander, Hannah's wide eyes and bow, shaped lips drawn into an O, shape were more than enough indication that Xander had scared her. That was the last thing he'd intended but declaring what his plans were was the closest he could come to telling her the truth. She glanced away from him, toward the glassy water. Her eyebrows knitted together to make a small crease just above the bridge of her nose. The moonlight took over the pinks and oranges from the sunset, glowing on her hair and enhancing the cream of her skin. Xander took a deep breath. He'd gone too fast and too far. He couldn't help it. He'd been at Bella Acres a week already and hadn't made any progress. His foreman wasn't sure if six weeks would be doable and frankly, Xander didn't want to wait that long. He leaned forward, trying to snag her attention. Hey, what are you thinking? He'd already said too much. He needed a response from her. Something. Anything but the blank stare she directed at the scenery. Half, shrugging, Hannah turned to face him fully. She lifted her chin. All of that is interesting. I'm thinking how much I wanted that two years ago. Dang even 18 months ago. She shook her head. I'm trying to do other things now. I was done waiting around for Prince Charming then and I'm not going to count on him now. Xander nodded, carefully aware that he could be watching his own dreams wash into the marshy shores, if he wasn't more cautious. I'm not asking you to give up your dreams or even be exclusive with me. All I'm wondering is if it's feasible to see if I'd be able to fit among your plans. He offered an off. Kilter smile and loosely dangled his hand over his knee. A wry smile curved Hannah's lips. But everyone leaves. Xander. What's going to keep you around? The aching truth in her tone stung and Xander realized just how harshly she'd been hurt. He slowly stood from the boulder. She had no idea that he wanted her to join him. If he went anywhere, he wanted her with him. The more he got to know her. The more he realized Nathan had no idea who his sister was and all the better for Xander. He stopped in front of her, reaching up to cup his hand around the base of her neck, his thumb just along the curve of her jaw. I'm not a runner, Hannah. She searched his face and he hoped the deceit around the situation about her brother wasn't present in his features. Could Hannah one day return Xander's affections? The more he got to know her, the more he wanted their lives to mix together. He didn't need marriage right away but he would like things to move that direction. She stared, licking her lips, before slowly pulling away. It's late. Xander nodded, registering the dark that had settled around them. Maybe she couldn't. Maybe she couldn't care for him the way he wanted her to. He'd probably destroyed his chances with her by scaring her off. He hadn't meant to, but with only a few weeks left to make an impression, it was go big or go home and in Montana, cowboys went big especially filthy rich ones with everything to gain and nothing to lose. Hannah and her family were Xander's dream and he didn't want to lose out on the one thing money couldn't buy. Family. They walked along the soft grass leading to their quiet mares. Was that her answer? The tension mounted between them, or maybe it was just Xander being over, sensitive as he tried to figure out what to do so he didn't lose the ground he had to hope he gained. Another fifty feet to the horses stretched before them. Xander took a deep breath, wishing they still stood at the edge of the pond with the water trickling into the deep cool pool. Xander kept his gaze down, watching where he stepped. Once every few seconds he would catch a glimpse of Hannah as she walked beside him. More steps passed and Xander wanted to slow down. 
How did he slow the night down? He didn't want the time with her to end. Startling him, Hannah reached out and took his hand in hers, her fingers warm and comforting. Xander shot her a bewildered glance, his eyes wide. She smiled nervously at him like she had no idea if what she was doing was okay. Her smile faded and she chewed on her lower lip as she slowly started to drop his hand. They stopped walking and she tried to turn away. Shaking off his shock, Xander squeezed his fingers so she couldn't take her hand back. He shook his head when she glanced at him. Their gazes locked and Xander tugged her slowly forward to fall back into step with him. She didn't fight him, going along and the smile returned to her lips. Maybe, just maybe, Xander would finally get his happy, ever, after. Big risks might be all the pay, off he was going to need. He didn't kiss her, but instead pulled her into his arms and held her close to his chest, reveling in the way she fit against him. The time to kiss her hadn't come. But holding her in the moonlight was good enough for him. Chapter 15 Hannah Hannah couldn't figure out why she was so filled with doubts and questions after the romantic night with Xander. Time with him seemed to be filled with sweetness and promise. Everything he did was centered around her and she couldn't figure out why. She had to stop doubting herself. Stephanie was confident and owned what she did and who she was. Hannah needed to be like that. She could be like that. She didn't bring up Nate, regarding Xander asking about him. One thing she'd learned over the years, if someone had integrity, they would tell you what they knew or didn't know when they were ready and not before. He had to know how much she needed to know if he'd found anything out. She needed to know, even if it was a no. She could handle it. She just had to find out. For all of Xander's talk about potential and future, and all of that, he hadn't brought up the most important topic with her and until he did she'd probably keep him at arm's reach. She didn't know if she could trust him or not, except. Except, over the next ten days he made that extremely difficult. She couldn't keep an attentive man at any distance when he charmingly worked to get into her heart. And then Stephanie's wedding day dawned bright and sunny. Even the dew on the grass outside sparkled like diamonds. A magical moment for a fairy tale. Bustling around and getting things set up made talking to Xander difficult. Hannah tried catching glimpses of him as she set up chairs and helped get the reception food set up in the barn. The ranch hands had all been assigned early morning fencing and then they would be released about three, a couple hours before the wedding would start. Drake didn't want them to feel like they had to work the ranch during the ceremony or the party. They would be welcome to attend, but weren't expected to. They weren't family. No matter how much Hannah was starting to get attached to one of them. She hoped Xander would make it to the wedding. She had a beautiful dress picked out and he hadn't seen her dressed and made up yet. She wouldn't mind having him see her looking her best. At least once. Cars arrived and parked amidst trucks, organized carefully by some young men hired from town. The entire Bella Acres had been decorated with a ranch theme. Hay bales, wild flowers, rock water fountains here and there, as well as shading pop-up tents set up in random locations. The seating led out in the shade of the large barn with Stephanie walking down an aisle where the head of it was protected from view behind the house. Everyone started gathering, taking their places as they'd been instructed. Cyan carried her son, sitting beside Jareth and Kyle while Sherry snapped pictures of the crowd. Standing off to the side, Hannah twirled a chunk of hair around her finger. Curling the mass of her hair had taken a while and she'd pinned half of it at the top of her head. The lavender dress had an empire waist and a skirt that fell in an A, lined to just above her ankles. She wore princess-style slippers with ribbons that crisscrossed up to her knees and peaked from the front slit in the skirt when she walked. She wore a delicate pearl necklace that had belonged to their mother. Would she see Xander? The chairs filled with loved ones and friends from town. Drake's parents showed up, looking more relaxed and comfortable than they had the last time they'd been at Bella Acres. Days before Emma had died. Ruby, Hannah's recently returned cousin, motioned toward Hannah, her eyes wide. We're ready to start. Get back there. Now. Hannah jerked forward from where she'd leaned against the side of the barn. She nodded tightly at Ruby who had already turned away to set some other things up, like Drake at the front beside the pastor to wait for his bride. She had to pick up her bouquet before she could join Stephanie at the back. They decided that Hannah would walk ahead of Stephanie and they would just not have anyone walk Stephanie down the aisle. It would be okay. They would get the wedding over with. It was time one of them had a happy, ever, after. 
even if it meant not having their entire family there to celebrate with them. Hannah glanced over her shoulder and she reached the table holding her bouquet. Everyone seemed in place. Ruby motioned discreetly but also a little wildly at Hannah for her to hurry. Widening her eyes and gritting her teeth, Hannah forced a smile. She was going. What was the big rush? The music started and Hannah realized she really was late. She walked with a tight swing to her arms as she rushed around the side of the house. The hem of her dress caught on a thorn, tugging the material and she paused, just as she reached where Stephanie was waiting for her. Looking down at the snag, Hannah sighed. Sorry, Ruby's out there acting like she's the drill sergeant. She's never even been to boot camp. Unsnagging her dress, she straightened her posture and stepped forward from the shadows of the house with her gaze on Stephanie. But her sister wasn't alone. And Hannah shifted her eyes from Stephanie in her white wedding dress with the halter, style top and simplistic A, line skirt to a tall man that bore a striking resemblance to their father. And Nate. Hannah blinked, taking in Stephanie's slightly parted lips and adoring gaze as she stared up at the man beside her. She shook her head, trying to breathe normally, but unsure just what she was seeing. Had their father come back as a ghost? Why did everything seem so surreal? Hello, Hannah. Nate's voice hadn't changed except to take on a slight rasp on the lower end of his vowels. He wore a black Stetson over a black suit jacket and jeans. At least he'd worn jeans. Nate had never been one to wear a suit. Black worn cowboy boots peeked from beneath the clean, well, stacked denim. Hannah tried to swallow, her mouth suddenly extremely dry. She shook her head and blinked. I don't. Why? When? Hannah. Get going. Ruby was suddenly there, standing behind Hannah and motioning toward the front. The song introduction has started three times. Let's go. Ruby glanced past Hannah's stricken expression and furrowed her brow. Sighing, she motioned toward the wedding gathering just around the corner. Come on. You can deal with it later. Nice to see you, Nate. Hannah turned from her brother and sister as Stephanie placed her hand in the crook of Nate's elbow and stepped into place behind Hannah. How was she supposed to walk down that aisle like everything was normal? The notes of the music Stephanie and Drake had chosen for their wedding march pulled Hannah forward and she numbly stepped in time with the beat. She couldn't focus on what exactly she was supposed to be doing. Smiling, maybe? But she couldn't be sure as she felt like she couldn't catch her breath. Each step took her closer to the front of the party, closer to Drake, further from Nate. But then the crowd gasped, mostly the trails, and Hannah knew Nate followed close behind. She couldn't wait for the ceremony to end so she could pull him aside and talk to him. At least he'd made it back for his sister. Wasn't that a sign that he loved them? Xander, Nathan was there. At Bella Acres. Xander had planned on attending the wedding and seeing if he could play more romance on Hannah. He would love to see her in a wedding setting. As the music had started, Xander had moved to stand at the door of the barn, glancing around the guests for a sign of Hannah. She'd be an important part of the wedding since it was her sister walking down the aisle. A woman in soft lavender turned as an auburn, haired woman called out for Hannah. Xander had frozen as he took in Hannah dressed as if she'd walked from the pages of a fairy tale. Her hair hung in loose curls around her shoulders with half pulled back to her crown. A mischievous grin graced her entrancing lips as she rolled her eyes and rushed to a table holding flowers. Then she disappeared. In less than two minutes she returned, leading a solemn march back into view. She gripped the flowers like she wanted to strangle them, her chest moving up and down. A distinct pallor suggested something had happened since she'd left moments before. Furrowing his brow, Xander half, stepped from the shadows of the barn and that's when he spied Nathan walking down the aisle with Stephanie on his arm. Nathan couldn't know Xander was there, at Bella Acres. He couldn't know that Xander was trying to infiltrate his family and run off with his sister. Because even though that's not really what was going on, Nathan would be hard, pressed to see it any other way. Sticking to the shadows, Xander ducked into the barn and rushed out the back. He'd have to stay far away from the festivities for the rest of the day, if he didn't want to get caught by Nathan. Some things were just better left alone. Nathan dealing with his family was one of those things. Stephanie, Nate was there and he wasn't talking. He'd shown up behind Stephanie at the house and hadn't said a word. Not when she'd spied him and pressed her hand to her throat in shock, not when he'd offered his arm, 
Not when Hannah had walked up. He didn't say anything as they walked down the aisle and everyone reacted in shock. Stephanie's nerves clanged and jingled as he walked beside her. She couldn't speak either as they moved in unison. Drake waited for her at the end of the aisle, beside the pastor from town. His eyes grew wide at the sight of Nate by her side, but he didn't say anything. No, there was more than enough murmuring going on as the rest of the trails exclaimed over Nate's appearance. Stephanie had no doubt he would be bombarded as soon as the pastor said Drake could kiss the bride. She squeezed her fingers on his arm, grateful at least that he was there, with her. She needed him, more than she'd admitted to and she wanted to tell him everything he'd missed out on. She wanted to hug him and tell him how much he was missed and needed. Everything he probably didn't want to hear. Everything he probably needed to hear. She really just wanted to tell him how much she loved him. All too soon. Nate handed her off to Drake and the ceremony started. Stephanie wasn't sure what happened next with Nate, but she married her best friend and became the wife she'd longed to be for longer than she should have had to wait. Her happy, ever, after was starting and now her brother was back to fill in the gaps. Hannah, Hannah stood in the spot Ruby told her to wait and watched as Nate handed Stephanie off to Drake. She waited for him as he slowly strode to the side of the seated crowd and expected him to take a seat and watch the ceremony but he just kept walking. He disappeared around the side of the house. And Hannah's heart sank. He was gone and she knew it. Deep down she didn't have to search too hard to know he'd left. He'd shown up for a simple moment and then he'd left. She refused to chase after him. What would she do? Catch him? Then what? He didn't want to stay. Hannah couldn't ruin Stephanie's day when Nate had shown up to try to help. Hannah would undo everything he'd done with his sudden appearance. Hannah owed her sister more than ruining the rest of the day and making it all about their brother. No. She turned back to the wedding, smiling with tears in her eyes as she stared at Stephanie and Drake holding hands and listening to the man marrying them. Chapter 16 Xander Xander didn't sleep well that night. Laying in the bed assigned to him beneath the window that faced south, he watched the moon crest in the clear sky and then begin its descent. The large silvery orb held his gaze, as he watched it move on its journey. He didn't want to go to sleep and wake up to find that everything had changed. He had a date with Hannah and he didn't want life to ruin it. He was going to court her like he would if he were back home and she knew him as himself. He'd lose the deferential treatment and be the man he was instead of the worker she thought him to be. Not that he was ashamed of working or being a ranch hand. On the contrary. He was taking orders and doing the grunt work without complaint but things weren't moving along as fast as he needed them to. When he'd calculated out the six weeks he would need, he'd failed to take into account the fact that he wouldn't be around for hours on end due to the actual work. Indeed, the last few days the crew had been working on fences between Bella Acres and the neighboring ranch. Grabbing a moment here or there to even think about Hannah had been next to impossible. Claiming a date with her had been a purely desperate move. He was watching the days pass like leaves flitting on the wind and he couldn't catch the opportunities he was losing. He was exhausted and he should be sleeping, but there was so much possibility before him. His feelings for Hannah were overwhelmingly optimistic. There was something about her he needed in his life. He couldn't pinpoint exactly what it was, but the shy smile she gave him and the way her eyes seemed to light up when she saw him sent his heart into a frenzy. How could he be so lucky to be attracted to her more than he'd ever hoped? She would fit in with him. He just knew it. He just needed more time to prove it to her. Snoring men had become almost as white noise in the bunkhouse, but it didn't lull Xander to sleep. He longed for the quiet of his own house and the sanctuary of his room. He would suffer as long as he needed to just to stay by Hannah. Xander tucked an arm behind his head and rolled to his side, watching as the moon continued arcing across the sky. The sun wouldn't be up for another hour or so and the pre-dawn darkness set off the twinkle of the stars and the fullness of the moon. Was Hannah sleeping well? He couldn't stop thinking of her and the way she smelled. A vibrating in his jean pants caught his attention. He'd folded his pants on the end of the bed for him to put back on the next day. He didn't have access to all of his clothes or even a laundry room every day like he did back home. Glancing around at the other sleeping men who were just dark. Large forms spread throughout the room. Xander sat up and yanked his jeans toward him. His phone slid from the back pocket, the vibration louder as the cell was freed from its constraints. Glancing at the screen as he picked it up, Xander's eyes widened. 
Tommy. What could make his foreman call him before the sun was up? Easing quickly from the bed, Xander answered the call, but didn't speak. He held the phone to his ear and padded quietly from the large bunkhouse, down the stairs, and onto the deck. A brisk breeze picked up around him. He hoped Hannah or anyone else wouldn't find him in his boxer shorts. Once he got a safe distance from the bunk room, he lifted the phone to his ear. Tommy? What's going on? Even though he was far enough away, he didn't raise his voice too loud. Some words didn't need to carry. He searched around him for signs of wakefulness and the lights on in the main house worried him. Who was up and where would they be right then? On their way outside? Sorry to call so early, sir. Lens got in a fight with Nathan in town at the bar. I'm not sure what it was about. Nathan is refusing to come back and the sheriff is threatening to lock him up. Lens is pretty banged up and the other hands are upset. Tommy sighed, dropping the tone of his voice. Look, sir, I'm good at my job, I am, but the men know you're not here. There's more control over them when you are. They respect you. I know what you're going to say. Yeah, they respect me, but not as much as they respect you. It would be better if you were here, sir. I'm not sure Silver Spoons would benefit from you being gone another two to four weeks. A tremor in Tommy's voice gave away how nervous he'd been to say something. Of course, he had thought about it for a while. The reality was Xander had other responsibilities and while his dreams involved his happiness, he had other people he was responsible for and a large ranch to run. It wasn't fair what he was doing to Tommy or the men. And he knew it. Why would Nathan cause problems now? Attending the wedding might have had more of an impact on the oldest trail than he'd figured in when he'd come back. He'd been so solid and stable. Xander had to choose to be there for his friend or be there for his friend's sister. Either way, he was hurting someone, letting someone down. Xander closed his eyes. He would have to sacrifice one dream for another. Because wasn't that what Silver Spoons was? His ultimate dream? He wanted a family to fill the home and make everything worth it. He wanted a family so bad, but he wouldn't have anything to give them, if he let Silver Spoons be anything less than the priority that it was. An ache in his chest grew. Glancing at the main house, Xander turned away from the glowing windows, one dark window in particular. He nodded, even though Tommy couldn't see. All right, Tommy. I'm sorry to have done this to you. I'll be there sometime this coming afternoon. I'm leaving in the next hour. I'll be back for good. He didn't let any of the disappointment or regret into his tone. There was no room for emotion in business, that was something he pushed and his men knew it. Thank you, sir. I'll get the place ready for you and let Maria know you'll be here for dinner. The relief in Tommy's voice was all the encouragement Xander needed that he was doing the right thing. Why then did it feel so wrong? Probably because everything in him wanted Hannah and what being a member of her family meant. The only problem was, by coming to claim Hannah and her family, he was forsaking his ranch family on silver spoons. One of those members of his ranch family was a member of Hannah's family, too. Large strides carried him up the stairs to the bunkhouse where he stealthily pulled on clothes from the day before and packed the rest of his things. Leaving the bed made and ready for the next ranch hand, Xander pulled his pack over his shoulder and tucked his hat on his head. In getting ready, he'd made a quick trip to the bathroom and brushed his teeth and washed his face. The trip home would have to be fast. He couldn't justify dallying on the highway or even waiting until Hannah was awake. Nathan had never pushed the boundaries of the bar like Tommy had reported. He wasn't usually aggressive and the new display worried Xander. What had happened to make Nathan lose his cool? The thud of Xander's boots on the wooden floor were muffled as he shifted his weight more to the toe of his feet. He ignored the pull of the bunkhouse kitchen just for one glance inside to cement memories of Hannah in his heart. Reaching his truck, he tossed his pack in the front seat and started the engine. The loud thrum of the diesel motor bounced back at him from the wall of the barn. While his rig warmed up, he made the walk to the back of the house. Ignore the garden, Xander. There's nothing there for you. But he couldn't help continually glancing toward Hannah's room. Her window was open just a couple inches, and he could whisper inside to wake her up. And for what? To tell her he was leaving? To say goodbye? 
to tell her the truth about who and what he was and that the reason he was leaving was because Nathan was causing a ruckus back at Xander's ranch? No. He'd rather let her rest. He'd leave a message with Drake and hopefully that would let her down gently. He didn't deserve to say goodbye, no matter how much it hurt. Lights glowing in the kitchen pulled Xander closer to the back door. Drake was probably up getting ready for a busy day on the back pasture. Opening the screen door, Xander took a deep breath and knocked softly on the heavy oak door. He blinked back his regret. What he was doing was low and he probably wouldn't get a second chance. Not with Hannah, or with the family. How had everything changed in moments? Something he could thank Nathan for. He knocked once more, ducking his head as he realized he might be waking people up. He had to try to explain to Drake at the very least. He couldn't explain to Hannah. Not right then. He couldn't face what he was leaving behind. Drake pulled open the door, a cup of coffee in his hand, and no boots on his stockinged feet. Xander, is everything all right? He looked past Xander's hat and then returned his searching gaze to Xander's face. I have to go. There's an emergency on my ranch and I can't let my foreman deal with it. I'm sure you understand. Xander stood there as himself, as Drake's peer. Thank you for giving me the chance to work here. Things were going as I'd hoped. Confused, Drake ran a hand through his hair and leaned forward. I'm sorry. What? Your ranch? I don't. It's a lot to go into, but I don't really have the time right now. He pulled out a card and handed it across to Drake who took it with questions in his eyes. Xander tapped the face of the card. Tell Hannah, if she wants to find Nathan Rourke, he's at the Silver Spoons Ranch, outside of Merston. This side of the border. Xander lifted his chin. Drake jerked his gaze to Xander's face at the mention of his brother, in, law. What do you know of Nate? Suspicion darkened Drake's trusting expression to one of questions and doubt. I know he's worked for me just this side of a year. Xander stepped back, ready to run from the ranch and everything he wanted so badly. He'd betrayed the family by holding the truth from them. He'd done this. He'd treated everything like a game instead of trying to help them. Xander didn't know what it meant to be a family. He was about to lose all of his chances with the one he wanted. Drake glanced back at the card, looking closer at the text. He raised his eyes back to Xander's face. Are you Alexander Strong? Doubt and frustration colored Drake's face a ruddier shade of tan. Alexander Strong III. I usually go by Alex, but since my father died, that's been changing to Xander. He shook his head, as the full extent of his duplicitous actions reared up and screamed in his face. I know I lied by omission on more things than I have a right to claim. I justified the secrets when you didn't ask me for my last name and my foreman never used my name when you spoke. Drake studied Xander, disbelief turning the sides of his mouth down. After a moment, he tucked his chin, piercing Xander with his gaze. You think Hannah's going to want anything to do with you after this? She's not. You lied to her. She's been hurt enough. You need to stand up and tell her yourself about your lies. I don't want any part in this. Drake shook his head, shoving the card toward Xander. Xander held up his hand, turning pleading eyes back to the brother. In, law he wouldn't have now. No, man, you don't get it. I thought I knew what I wanted when I came here. I thought I knew what love was, but the more I learned about Hannah, about you guys, the more I realized I don't know anything. He reached out and grasped Drake's hand, smashing the card into his palm. I would have really liked to know you better, brother. I know Nathan and he's, if the rest of you are anything like him, you have one heck of a family. He swallowed past the tightening in his throat. I wanted what the trails represent. I wanted that in my life. I was willing to do anything to get it, even lie. I'm sorry. Truth registered on Drake's face as tears shone in his eyes. He grimaced, blinking. You know him? You really see him? Reaching up, he pushed his fingers over his eyelids. Sniffing. Yeah, I know him. He works for me. We're drinking buddies down at the bar. He's family. Xander offered a half, smile filled with apologies, knowing they wouldn't help, because nothing was going to assuage his loss. Why should he expect anything he said would help Drake? Tell him, tell Nate his family misses him. Drake swallowed on the halting words. We want him to come home. I got it. And just so you know, 
The Montana Trail cousins are all Nathan talks about. He turned away, letting the screen door close softly behind him. Regret blanketed him in a chilly embrace as he walked to his truck. Xander was leaving behind his opportunities, not just for a family but for a love like Nathan spoke about. What was he going to go back and say to his friend? What would Drake tell Hannah? How would he ever make it up to himself? The loss of Hannah was one he was going to feel long into the twilight of his life. Drake. Drake stared at the card as he slowly shut the door behind him. He padded back to the kitchen and rather than pick up the cup he'd been pouring coffee into when he'd been interrupted, Drake sank to the seat. What was he supposed to do with the bomb Xander? No. Alexander Strong had just dropped on him. Xander wasn't a ranch hand. As rich as he was, that man had come and worked for Drake. Why? He'd claimed he was after the family, but why would anyone do that? Drake couldn't figure any of it out. How was he supposed to tell Hannah that the man she was interested in wasn't the man she thought he was? Stephanie had told him she had a date with Xander. That wasn't going to happen. No. Drake was supposed to do the dirty work and let Hannah know her heart had been let down again. Was it cowardice that Drake didn't want to warn her? He just kind of wanted to fade into the work he had to do that day. Maybe what he needed was a cup of coffee before he made any major decisions. One way or the other, he was going to be a part of hurting Hannah. That didn't set well with him. She was family. And protecting family was more important than anything else. Chapter 17 Hannah all day Hannah had gotten ready for her date, even with just little things like painting her toenails and trying to find the pearl earring of her mother she'd kept in a jewelry box on her dresser. The weather had topped out at sunny and optimistic with a breeze which stirred up the 80-degree heat. Xander had said to dress nice so Hannah put on a black pencil skirt with a button-up midnight blue silk blouse. She'd even gone to the trouble of curling her dark hair and putting on makeup. She hated makeup. But as she twisted and turned in front of the full, Length mirror, she had to admit she hadn't felt that feminine in a long while. Xander was pushing her to be what she wanted to be, he'd pushed chasing her dreams and really going after what she wanted. Somehow, he'd edged himself onto that list and it was all she could do to not run to him and tell him how much she was starting to care. She had to keep a little of her dignity. The time he was going to pick her up approached and butterflies fluttered in her stomach. Hannah slipped into the black heel Stephanie had let her borrow. She was so excited. A real date with a man she was growing to care deeply for. She planned on telling him that night that she wanted to include him in her plans for the future. She wasn't sure how she was going to be able to do everything she wanted as well as have him, but he had to know he was worth trying for. The heels of her shoes clicked as she walked down the stairs and stopped in the kitchen. She raised her shoulder and batted her lashes at Stephanie. Her sister laughed. Nice. I didn't know you knew how to look like a girl. Stephanie rounded her sister scanning her up and down and nodding approvingly. Wow, Hannah. You really know how to gussy up. She reached out and hugged her, excitement in the curve of her cheeks and the brightness of her smile. Thanks. Hannah glanced toward the grandfather clock by the front door. Five minutes. He was supposed to be there in five minutes. She searched the main floor, listening for signs of Drake. Where's Drake? Aren't you guys going out tonight? He's late. I haven't seen him since last night. He got up before dawn to go with the guys to finish the fences and to retrieve a bison calf from the north bend in the range. We're just staying in. I think they're taking it easy tomorrow, so he can stay up, or sleep on the couch. She ended on a chuckle. After a minute, realization dawned and furrowed her brow, all humor gone from her face. Xander might be a few minutes late, if he's with Drake and the men. Oh, yeah. That's out of his control. Hannah sighed, widening her gaze and bouncing on the balls of her feet. I'm just so excited. She rubbed at her neck, careful not to touch her face or hair and risk messing things up. Stephanie grinned knowingly. I bet you are. He's good, looking as all get, out. She nodded like she had the end, all opinion on how men looked. Hannah easily agreed with her. Xander was good, looking but most importantly he was kind and respectful. He was someone she could see in her life for a long time. Admitting that was hard when she didn't believe people stayed and she only had faith in her family. Xander was proving her wrong and the altering of that belief was drastic, in a good way. 
seven o'clock rolled around, bringing about the thunder of horse hooves down the drive. Hannah's excitement rekindled. Her date was just getting started late. She could wait a little longer. Hopefully, he was as excited as she was. Stephanie and Hannah moved out to enjoy the cool breeze and watched the men file into the bunkhouse. The few they caught sight of looked tired and worn out. Drake brought up the rear, frustration evident in the angle of his jaw and the terse nod he sent Stephanie's way. He avoided looking at Hannah. Did he know about the date? He probably wouldn't be happy. But Hannah wasn't going to let his reaction dampen her excitement. She searched for Xander, but he probably already darted inside. Knowing him, he'd clean up and get ready. Hannah couldn't wait to see what he'd come up with for their date. But when eight o'clock donged on the grandfather clock and Drake had already climbed the back steps almost forty minutes ago, Hannah's excitement started to dim. Had Xander forgotten? That wouldn't be horrible. He'd been working hard all day. She wouldn't mind taking a rain check so he could get some rest. She really just wanted to make sure he was okay. She waited until 8.30 before she descended the steps and walked out to the bunkhouse to check on him. Was there a line for the showers? Hannah poked her head into the front sitting room of the bunkhouse so she wouldn't invade the private space of the sleeping area. Cookie and a few of the men sat on couches and watched a large flat, screen television mounted on the wall. Cookie saw her and stood. He approached her, a towel in hand. Hi, Miss Hannah. What can I do for you? He glanced around the sitting area, pressing his lips together firmly as if to warn the men to behave while she was there. They all looked too beat to do anything but stare at the screen. I was looking for Xander. Is he out here? Hannah smiled, trying not to seem too desperate, but there she was in a dress, asking about a hand. How much more obvious could she get? No, Miss Hannah. His stuff is gone. He left this morning. At least that's what Mr. Drake said. Cookie's sympathetic gaze roved her face before he turned back to the common area. Unwilling to assimilate the truth, Hannah nodded tightly. Thank you. She backed up, confusion slowing her movements. Was Cookie wrong? Had Drake, she couldn't figure anything out. The words were just a jumbled mess in her head. Xander wouldn't have left. Not without telling her. She stepped slowly down the stairs. Pausing at the bottom, she bit her lip. After a moment of indecision, she half ran in her heels and dressed toward the parking lot where the men stored their trucks. His dark blue ram was gone. The rig wasn't in his normal spot or in any of the other spots. She rushed through the lot, checking the drive out front. Maybe he'd gone there after his shower and Cookie was just teasing her. His truck was nowhere to be seen. He was gone. He'd left. Xander had done what she knew what he would do. She'd known it. She'd listened to his pretty words and his empty promises and she'd let her heart become attached as if he were different from anyone else. Shock dropped her to her knees. She balled her hands into fists on her thighs, ignoring the bite of the gravel digging into her skin through the nylon tights. Why was she so stupid? She knew he'd leave. She just hadn't known he would leave in the middle of her falling for him. Never again. Never. Heartache was for saps and she'd never be a soft, hearted woman again. Chapter 18 Xander The drive was uneventful. Xander's truck cab was filled with regret and anger and by sheer force of will he made it to Silver Spoon's ranch shortly before dinner. He'd missed his home with its wrought iron archway over the drive and sweeping plains which stretched acres and acres on either side of the drive. The velvety dark sky was so large it pressed upon the earth with its vastness, only feeling freeing when one was on the back of a horse and riding. Xander had the whole drive home to wallow in his regret and everything he left behind. He didn't even fully comprehend what could have been with Hannah because he hadn't explored it fully. There hadn't been enough time to really explore anything with her. All he knew was that his heart ached and he hadn't realized what that would feel like. No one had warned him what falling in love would be like. He was going to regret his move the rest of his life. Maybe she would come, but it wouldn't be for him. She didn't want to be with anyone who would leave. She believed everyone left. And could he blame her? He'd promised he wouldn't leave Anne. He'd left. He'd committed the cardinal sin in her eyes and there would be no forgiveness for him. Forget the fact that he'd lied about who he was and everything else. Dang, he'd even lied about her brother and what he knew. No, 
Liars didn't deserve second chances. He didn't deserve anything from her. Parking his rig and turning off the engine, Xander climbed from the cab. If nothing else, at least he'd be glad to climb into his own kind, sized bed that night. Working as a hand had taught him a few things and he'd be making some adjustments for his own workers to improve their experience. A crashing sound coming from his large barn drew his attention. He left his pack in the truck and strode across the drive. Tommy rushed out to meet him, consternation tight in his weathered skin. I'm glad you're back, sir. He hasn't stopped since the sheriff released him to me. He must be Nathan. All of his crushing disappointment zeroed on one man. Xander held up his hand. I've got this now, Tommy. Thank you. I'm sorry for the trouble. It won't happen again. He clapped his foreman on the back without breaking stride. Crossing the gravel drive, Xander pushed open one of the double doors to the barn. The front interior of the barn looked like a tornado had passed through with hay bales torn into pieces and spread haphazardly around the normally swept floor. Gold hay dust drifted through the air, disturbed only by rapid movement. Nathan had pushed over a saddle rest at some point. He leaned on its hind legs protruding into the air while he swigged from a bottle of dark amber-colored liquor. The label faced his palm and the level of the contents was the only thing clearly seen. Judging from the line, Nathan had been at his destructive rampage for a while. Hey! Xander yelled. He stormed inside his now-trashed barn area. Extra hats he had available for visitors had been flung around the floor. More straw bales stacked on the far side had been ripped into and strewn about. Twine and tack lay twisted together at the base of the closet whose doors were still open, one half, ripped off its hinges. He tightened his jaw, clenching his fists at his sides. What do you think you're doing? This is my place, not yours. What is your problem? That he even had to remind Nathan of any of that rankled. Who did Nathan Rourke think he was? Friends didn't do that and employees who wanted to keep their jobs didn't do that either. Least of all, a decent human being didn't destroy another man's property. Nathan dropped to the bottle to his side, taking a deep breath before turning his enraged glare toward Xander. He stood from his perch on the legs and stepped forward, thrusting his finger toward the textured cement floor. Let's not be hypocrites, today, man. Were you there? Did you go to Bella Acres? He shook his head disbelief marring his features. Don't lie to me, Alex. The truth would come out eventually. Isn't that how the saying went? Xander had hoped he wouldn't have to tell Nathan anything until he'd won over Hannah and he was marrying her. Xander could be the knight in shining armor for the whole family and present Nathan to the Montana trails at the wedding. He'd had it all planned out. But none of that was possible now. Not anymore. Thanks to Nathan and his uncontrollable temper. Xander lifted his chin, narrowing his eyes. I did. Why? What does it have to do with you? You wrote them off. All of them. He hadn't been called Alex in a few weeks and it brought him back to who he really was. What his real role was. He didn't ask how Nathan knew where Xander was. Nathan would spill everything, if Xander gave him enough time. Tommy said you were, expanding. A buddy of mine from a couple towns over let me know of a call, out about a rare studying option I thought for sure you'd want to know about. So, I called your cell yesterday morning and some guy answered. His lips pressed tight together and he shook his head, his eyes rolling in betrayal. Some guy. He huffed humorlessly. Drake. Drake Benson answered. He didn't recognize my voice, but I did his. I asked what your role was there at Bella Acres and he said you worked as a hand. Xander was speechless. He'd only left his phone unattended for a few times and one of them had been in the commons area before heading out for a day of work. He'd been outside with Hannah, in the garden. He hadn't thought anything about it. He lifted a hand and let it fall weakly back to his side. Why would you need to work there? You own most of eastern Montana and some of North Dakota. I mean, Nathan stated the obvious as if Xander was a little child being called to task. Nathan looked down at the bottle in his hand and then back to Xander. What were you doing there, man? I don't. He was clearly drunk and Xander could see that. Just how drunk Nathan was would determine how much of the conversation he remembered. Xander stepped forward. Do I pay you enough? Do you feel neglected? We aren't friends, Nathan, 
not conventional friends anyway. We ride a fine line between friends, employer and employee, and I had hoped one day we would be family. I wanted to push all of the other stuff aside and just be brothers. I don't have anyone left in my family to marry and trust me, I'm not an option. Nathan snorted, lifting the bottle for another drink and then slowly lowering it. What are you talking about? Why aren't you making sense? Xander closed his eyes for a moment and then pierced Nathan with his gaze. I was close, Nathan. I probably only needed a few more weeks and you ruined even that for me. You're not satisfied destroying your own bridges with your family, you have to overturn everyone else's. Xander tried not to let his anger consume him, but the frustrations from the last twenty, four, hours were getting to him and he'd let Hannah down because of what? Nathan's inability to control himself? What are you talking about? You're not tied to my family. Did you go there to meet someone? They're all married, Alex. Everyone except Hannah and she's too young, wait, a minute. Nathan's eyes widened, he motioned toward Xander with the top of the bottle. Not. Hannah. What did you do? She's just a little girl, man. Xander shook his head, his anger fading to sadness. No. She's far from little anymore. I fell for her. She's nothing like you described. She's beautiful, spunky, strong, and determined. I fell for her and your family which I didn't even get to see very much of but which I could feel the draw to. Nathan's anger reached the volcanic point and he rushed Xander, grabbing him by the shirt lapels and pushing him until Xander's back scratched against the round, splintery wood of the rope post. Xander didn't flinch, turning his head to the side, he grunted. What? You can't handle honesty? It felt good to boldly declare the truth. To be honest and forthright. He hadn't been able to be honest long enough to feel like he might have forgotten how to be. Tears in Nathan's red, rimmed eyes hinted at more than just an inability to handle the truth. Holding his forearm across Xander's upper chest, he puffed, gasping against his own pain. That's my family. Mine. Xander didn't fight his friend. Whether he ever got another chance at being a member of the trails or not, Nathan was as good as his brother. Xander needed to set him straight. The man deserved it. He twisted his face until it was squared with Nathan's, an inch separating their noses. Then act like it. Go back to them. You'll always have a job here, if you want it, but they need you. You need them. Nathan jerked away, wiping at his face and breathing heavily. You don't understand. You don't get it. Enough is enough. You think I haven't watched you drink yourself hopeless this last year or so as you've worked for me? I haven't said anything before now because I liked having you for a drinking buddy as I wallowed in my own regrets and loneliness. Even though I lost Hannah, I'm not going to let this family down. Xander thrust a finger at Nathan's chest. You're my family, man. You and this crew here at Silver Spoons. You don't want to go back? At least face what you've given up and move on. I can't. You don't understand. I've been gone too long. Nathan shook his head, pressing his lips resolutely together. Xander stepped closer to his friend, his boots scratching over the straw, covered concrete. It's never too late. Go back. You were at the wedding. I saw you there. You just didn't see me. You showed up, then you ran. He reached out and clapped a hand on Nathan's shoulder. Look, you can do it as a favor for me, put in a good word with Hannah and she might forgive me in a thousand years or so. His sad self, deprecating laugh didn't fool either of them. At the question in Nathan's eyes, Xander twisted his lips to the side in a smile he didn't feel. I'm a liar. I said I would look into finding you when I knew where you were the whole time. She didn't even know me as my real name. I told her I was Xander. But, Nathan's shoulder slumped forward and he sighed again. Neither of us are good enough for the trails. He lifted the bottle and drained the last quarter, cup of contents. I'll be gone by morning. Why? You're quitting already? Xander didn't want to lose Nathan. He was a hard worker and while Tommy was his foreman, the older man would want to move on someday. The other men looked to Nathan for how to do things. He had solid experience in ranching jobs but he wasn't level, headed enough to lead. Not right now. Squinting at Xander, Nathan licked his lips. You're not firing me? Nope. Nice try, though. 
I know how you work, Rourke. Trying to get fired so you have an excuse to run. Tell you what, you want to leave? You're welcome to. I won't fight you. I'll even make sure your pay is ready and waiting. Xander leaned close and lowered his voice. But you won't be happy anywhere else. At least not right now. Nathan nodded slowly, as if processing what was happening was taking more brain cells than what were awake. Xander snapped his fingers as if he'd just remembered something. Oh, and can you, please, fix the problem with Lens? He likes you and it wasn't his fault that happened. I'm not sure what sparked it, but I'm sure there's a resolution in there somewhere. Xander claimed the empty bottle from Nathan. Since I'm giving orders, lay off the sauce, too. Nathan rubbed his free hand over his face. He blinked, taking in the destruction of the barn. He hadn't sobered up completely, but he had snapped out of his alcohol, induced rage enough to see what he'd done. He shook his head. I'm sorry, man. I didn't. I'll get this cleaned up. Xander nodded. Thanks. Sleep this off, first. I don't need you putting hats in the horse troughs. He offered a half, cocked grin and turned back to the house. Hannah was right. No one would care for your home the way you would. Unfortunately, Xander had had to make the decision to return and protect his home or stay and protect his heart. What a choice. Chapter 19 Hannah, if a week since Xander left hadn't helped with the pain, Hannah wasn't sure any amount of time was going to help. Especially since she couldn't sleep and she doubted everything about herself. At least she'd made a hard and fast decision she wasn't going to let herself walk away from. The morning after Xander left, Hannah had scheduled her tour with the culinary school. She'd clenched her teeth and forced herself to do it before she backed down. She was in the angry stage, the mad, I, can't, believe, he, left, me, like, that stage. After seven nights away from the situation, her anger had ebbed. She was just trying to fight the sadness with a solid resolution to get things done. She'd signed up for the tour and wouldn't let herself back out. Nathan and Xander wouldn't keep her from her dreams when they hadn't bothered to stick around. Hannah was supposed to leave that night for the school. She still hadn't told Stephanie or Drake what was happening. She was afraid that if they knew, they would succeed at talking her out of it. She planned on driving through the night and staying at a hotel in Merston until her tour time, which was early the next morning, about nine, but she had to double, check the itinerary they'd emailed her. Hannah hadn't had to put much work into dinner opting for steak and baked potatoes with some vegetables. She'd been packing all day and hiding that would have been difficult while working on an intricate meal. Drake broke through her thoughts. Did you want some bacon bits for your baked potato, Hannah? Drake offered her the glass bowl, stretching across the dinner table. He glanced at Stephanie like they were both waiting for something to happen, but they weren't sure what. Hannah took the bowl but set it beside her plate. She couldn't eat until she'd gotten the news off her chest. She couldn't just up and disappear like Nate had, like Xander had. Placing both hands palm down beside her plate, she stood slowly and looked at Stephanie and Drake. They stopped loading their plates and lowered their hands to rest on the table, watching her. She took a deep breath and hardened her resolve. I'm leaving tonight for a tour of a college I'm trying to get into. A culinary school. She sank into her seat, able to breathe a little more solidly. If nothing else at least she got it out, albeit a little choppy. The silence echoed around Hannah as Stephanie blinked repeatedly at her and Drake put his hand in his lap. They stared at Hannah like she'd announced she was leaving to join the rodeo in Mexico. A freeing sensation came over Hannah. She'd said what she needed to say and suddenly she was hungry. She ignored the silence and picked up her fork, eating her dinner with a gusto she'd missed since, well, since Xander left. She couldn't focus on him though she was going to start her life. It was for the best that he'd left. She never would have gone forward with chasing her dreams, if she'd been stuck at Bella Acres because of a ranch hand. She hadn't scheduled a tour until that time because she hadn't wanted to be away from the ranch and any time she might have had with him. Well, he'd left and she was moving on. Even if she had been falling for him. Stephanie picked up her fork and then put it back down on her plate, the resulting ting loud in the tense silence. She shook her head. No. You're not leaving. You can't just leave us like that. She looked to Drake for support, her eyes wide and desperate. Tell her, Drake. We need more notice than that. She can't leave. Tonight, 
you're going to leave tonight? She covered her mouth on a gasp, like she couldn't believe the horror and it wasn't even horrific. Drake considered his wife and then turned searching eyes toward Hannah. I get it. You've been so upset by what has been going on. You have my support. Stephanie gasped, but Drake continued. You do know you don't have to leave, though, right? We can get through this together. This is just as much your home as it is ours. But it wasn't. He could say that and while Hannah believed she could live there as long as she wanted, Bella Akers wasn't her home. It couldn't be. Too much was in the past. She shook her head. No, this is a good thing and it has nothing to do with. I've been planning on this for a while. I was rejected from the Seattle school a while back and then I tried for the school in North Dakota. From the way Drake skirted the topic, Stephanie must have told Drake about Xander. That added to her discomfort. She didn't need everyone knowing she'd been a naive girl and fallen for the head, turning cowboy. Stephanie jerked her head back at the mention of the schools. Well, the Seattle school is stupid to let you get away. PSH. Her immediate support for her sister brought tears to Hannah's eyes. It didn't matter that Stephanie didn't want her to leave, she was still upset that her sister had been rejected and immediately had her hackles up. That meant more than if Stephanie helped Hannah pack for the trip and walked her to the car. Hannah changed her mind and put her fork down and actually turned her glass of water around and around on the white tablecloth to give her fingers something to do. Thanks, Stephanie. She swallowed against the sudden tightness in her throat. Widening her gaze, Stephanie pulled back as she considered Hannah. Is this because of that guy? Stephanie glanced at Drake. Remember, I told you about Xander and Hannah having a date? He never showed up. Stephanie narrowed her eyes. Is that what this is about? You didn't say it was Xander. You said she was upset about being left. I assumed you meant Nate. Drake turned his gaze to Hannah, his expression filled with regret. I'm sorry, Hannah. I didn't know. I mean, I suspected, but I didn't know or I would have told you sooner. He shifted uncomfortably in his seat like he hid something and was caught. Had Hannah missed something? Stephanie and Hannah both understood that that was the incident. From a week ago, it had been a turning point for Hannah. But what did Drake know? Tell me what? Hannah turned a questioning gaze to Drake. What is going on? Did you know he was going to leave? She glanced at her plate and mumbled, like everyone else does. Drake's soft answer carried across the table. Like you're doing? It's not the same thing. Jerking her gaze to his face, Hannah half, shook her head in hard denial of the harsh truth. Of course, that's how it looked, but, she sank back into her seat. She was running. She bit her lower lip. It's not. Drake eyed Hannah like she had the answers and he was just waiting to hear them. Yeah, but it's different. I'm not going out of fear or loss. I'm going to better myself, to make dreams come true. You guys need to have your home to yourselves. It's time for little baby Bensons to run around the ranch. I want to start my life and I don't want to do it here. There's too much loss, her words trailed off. She didn't want the memory of Emma and her death to follow her around. She didn't want to be haunted by her brother's abandonment or the fact that the only man she'd ever even started to imagine a future with had left. None of that could rule her life. She had to move on and her sister and brother, in, law had to stand by her side, even as they watched her drive away. Considering Hannah, Drake leaned forward. He blinked several times while trying to make up his mind about something. Hannah glanced at Stephanie who watched Drake as well. What was he going to say? No. She was a grown woman. She didn't need his permission. But then, why was she sitting there, worried about what he was going to say? Because she loved him and he hadn't left Stephanie or Hannah yet. He might be the only man who never would. Xander didn't just leave. He had pressing responsibilities at his home to take care of. Drake's answer seemed out of place, almost as if he hadn't wanted to tell her, but he'd known she would need to know. Why hadn't he said anything about this earlier? Slapping the top of the table, Stephanie interrupted. Xander doesn't get any more of our time. You don't think about him. Think about what you're doing. When do you leave? How long do we have? Tonight, about an hour after dinner. 
Hannah dragged her gaze from Drake's face and looked to her sister who was obviously trying to put on a brave face with a stiff smile. Let's pack you some food, and maybe I can still con you into doing the dishes. Stephanie looked away from Hannah, toward her own plate and swallowed, her smile forced. Hannah had hoped Stephanie wouldn't be upset because Hannah was leaving. Hannah wasn't the only one Nate had walked away from, but she was the only one who was alone. Stephanie had Drake to turn to. Hannah didn't have anyone. After a moment, Drake reached into his pocket and pulled out his wallet. He dug out a card and slid it across the table to Hannah. When she picked it up, he said, stop in there. Rumor has it they have information on Nate. That bombshell brought Stephanie and Hannah's collective surprise, filled gasps. Nate? Really? Hannah asked what Stephanie apparently couldn't get out. Their brother? How long had Drake known? After a moment, Stephanie's surprise turned to suspicion. How long have you known about this, Drake? She stood up and walked around behind Hannah, leaning over to inspect the card with her sister. The card was simple but elegant with embossed ink and a sharp font. A week. I just didn't know when to say something or even if I should. Nate's been gone a long time. I'm not sure how beneficial it is to have our lives turned upside down every time there's even a remote chance we might find him. He doesn't want to be found. Drake's tired explanation was one Hannah had thought multiple times. The same argument she said repeatedly as she'd forced herself to stop looking for Nate in every store, every window she passed over the years. Except, he was her brother and she didn't want to stop looking. She studied the card. The town listed in the address line of the business card was Stampede, Montana. The name was familiar. She couldn't place it. Maybe it was close to Merston and she'd seen it on a map. The Silver Spoons Ranch. Alexander Strong. 3. Okay, that was pretentious as all get out, but she'd stop in to find out about Nate. Especially, if it was on her way. What could it hurt? She'd searched even colder clues on even deader trails. The card doubled, down her determination. Whoever this Alexander Strong was, he'd better be ready. She was going to claim her brother back. Chapter 20 Xander, Silver Spoon's ranch had taken on a whole new meaning for Xander. He didn't even want to return to using Alex, like before. Now, just over a week after having left, he could tell he'd changed. Instead of putting on his clothes like he was going out to survey the land and the work his crews were doing, he put on his ranching where to go work alongside them. He wouldn't know exactly what was going on with the men or with his place unless he was actually working and taking care of the ranch himself. Early mornings worked best for him and he couldn't help seeing the sunrise and thinking of the raspberries at Bella Acres. The way the pinkening light had made Hannah's dark hair look even darker and her skin even more fair. She could have been cast in the story Snow White. But none of that mattered now and Xander still couldn't get that loss out of his head. Or his heart. It had only been a week since he'd lost that dream and he couldn't imagine the pain would lessen any, if at all. He didn't want to face the fact that there was also a small amount of bitterness toward his home when he worked on it. As if he had to work there, because he'd given up his most basic of desires of a family and starting one of his own just to keep it running well. Maybe he could look into mail order bride or something. He'd heard of match, making. Something had to help him with his breaking heart. Even that thought felt disloyal. He hadn't had a chance to seek more with Hannah and he didn't want to try with anyone else, perfectly matched or not. The more he thought about it, the more he couldn't help wondering if a home was worth having, if there wasn't a family to add life to it. Chimes rang throughout the house, signaling the doorbell. He hadn't heard that sound in a long time and certainly not at 6, 30 or so in the morning. Maria wouldn't be up moving around until 7 or so. Answering the door would be up to him. It certainly wouldn't be missionaries or vacuum salesmen. There was no accident that the gate was closed and the drive as long as it was. If you were at the door of the main house, you had a reason and you'd gone through a lot to get there. Xander left his room and crossed the long expanse of the hallway across the kitchen, through the dining room, to the front door. He ran a hand through his wayward hair and swung the front door open. Hannah turned to face him from looking out over the front yard. The sunrise colors painted the background behind her softening the lines of her braid and around her eyes. She twisted her jaw to the side, narrowing her gaze while she took in his presence. Xander rested his hand on the edge of the door and stared. 
She had to be the most welcome sight he'd ever seen. He had to take the sight of her in. Had she forgiven him? She'd come to him. All that way. He smiled, unable to hide his delight. But Hannah wasn't happy to see him. She thrust her hand on her hip and cocked her head to the side. What? You work here, now? I can't escape you. She laughed derisively. Or you can't escape me. Xander ignored her anger. She was there. Her words didn't make sense, but her presence made up for any confusion. You're finally here. This is a lot sooner than I thought, but... I'm so glad. He smiled at her. He couldn't keep his joy from his face. Hannah furrowed her brow, jetting her chin outward as she slapped her second hand on her hip. She stepped back, inspecting the door and then around at the yard. I don't know what you're talking about. I came to find Nate. Drake told me I could find information about my brother here. Did you know the whole time? Drake didn't tell you I was here, too. The pieces started to fall into place, crushing him across the chest like a vice had been put in place and was slowly tightening around him. Drake was going to make him tell her. Xander had hoped to get out of that part, have her deal with it where he wouldn't have to see her disappointment. Apparently, Drake had other ideas. No. Why would he? Hannah squared up her feet, something deep in her gaze Xander didn't want to inspect too closely. Would she have come, if she knew he was there? A sinking sensation in his gut told him even the promise of her brother wouldn't have brought her there, if she'd known. He wasn't sure if he should thank Drake or curse him for keeping that part a secret. Xander inclined his head, dropping his hand to his side. He stepped past her, pulling the door shut behind him. Give me a minute and I'll grab Nathan. He's here. Nate is here. Hannah's voice shrunk and the sound broke his heart. Xander, are you? Are you Alexander Strong? Xander stopped at the top of the steps leading from the porch. He hung his head, turning back to face her after the space of a few seconds. Yes, I am. I told Drake everything. I thought for sure he'd told you. He took a deep breath and softly shook his head. I'm so sorry, Hannah. I went there to find you. I wanted you. Pain turned down Hannah's lips. She studied him, raising her face to see him better. You own all of this? She walked to the western side of the deck, taking in the vast expanse of land. Xander knew what her view was, he'd stared at it more times than he could count over the years. Would she be impressed by the sheer size of it? The fencing was invisible from where they stood. The house was in the middle of thousands of acres that stretched as far as the eye could see. Outbuildings on the east side of the homestead worked with large pines to break up the wind that constantly drove from the west. Chickens and pigs lived in the pens along the outbuildings, but some of his cattle grazed just past the main fencing. He finally answered the question she'd asked, but he hadn't wanted to own up to. Yes, Silver Spoon's ranch is mine. She braced her hands on top of the deck railing, shaking her head. You own all of this, why would you work at Bella Acres? Our ranch is nothing compared to yours. It's, why? Was that betrayal in her tone and the slouch of her shoulders? Because he wanted to meet you and the rest of the trails. Nathan's low voice answered her question before Xander could. His friend walked up the rest of the steps and glanced at Xander as he passed by. He cocked his head as he moved between Xander and Hannah. I heard the truck pull up. You never have visitors this early. He glanced at Hannah and then back at Xander. She came. I guess you were right. Hannah turned slowly, tears in her eyes unabashedly streaming down her face. You're here. After all this time. You've been here. She wiped at her cheeks, flicking her gaze to Xander's face. You've known him this whole time? Did you know him when you met me and I asked you about him? And you said you didn't know him? Lamely, Xander lifted a hand and then dropped it to his side. I said I didn't know a Nate Rourke. I don't. I know a Nathan Rourke. His defense was weak and pathetic and he regretted the words as soon as he'd uttered them. Hannah jerked back, twisting her lips. Seriously? That's how you're going to justify this? With that? She turned from Xander to Nathan studying him with her hands clenched into fists at her side. Hannah approached him slowly, fury and disbelief stamped in the tightness of her mouth and eyes. 
She stared at him for a long moment and then let her hand fly, her palm slapping across his face with enough force to turn his head to the side. She dropped her hand beside her, clenched again into a white, knuckled fist. You. Where have you been? You've missed so much. You've. We've had weddings and we've had so much. You think showing up for a few minutes for Stephanie's wedding was enough to erase everything you've done? Her voice dropped into a whisper, she blinked back tears, pain racking through her voice. I've grown up, Nate. You missed it. You've missed all of it. For what? She glanced around at the ranch. This? You missed all of our lives, your life, so you could ranch hand? Nathan looked away, the muscles in his cheek ticking. Look at me. Look at me when you make your excuses. Hannah's voice rose. Glancing at Xander, Nathan blinked back the shame in his gaze. I, Nathan lifted his chin and then turned his gaze to his sister. I don't owe you anything, Hannah. She stepped toward him with slow deliberation, leaving the tears on her face. You don't owe me anything? She nodded jerkily, then without warning, she threw back her head and laughed. The sound so juxtaposed with the moment and out of character enough Nathan looked more shocked than if she'd slapped him again. Hannah caught her breath and shook her head. How dare you? You've ruined everything for me. You've destroyed so many pieces of my heart. I can't even fall in love without you messing it up. I'm sorry I've ever looked for you. I'm sorry I've wasted so much of my time and efforts, looking for you. You obviously don't want us back. She stepped close to him, lowering her voice. I won't make that mistake again. Hannah pushed past him, a sob catching in her throat as she paused, meeting Xander's gaze with her own. Hannah, please, let me explain. Xander reached out to take her hand. It's a little late for explanations, Alexander. Don't you think? Tears freely flowed down her cheeks as she brushed past Xander. The two men stared at each other as the sound of her fleeing steps carried back to them. Xander winced when her car door slammed shut. Nathan finally broke eye contact as he moved to the side of the deck to watch her car speed down the drive. After a moment of breathlessness, Xander forced himself to take a deep breath. She'd been there and then she'd left. His heart felt like it had a moment's reprieve from starvation by her presence and now hurt doubly worse. Nathan turned back to Xander, a tick in his jaw giving away his anger. Did she just say fell in love? Is that with you? Xander hadn't even picked that up. He'd been too busy staring at her, wishing he could fix the tearing of her heartstrings. Was it possible? Had she? I missed that. Xander filled with wonder. If she'd fallen for him, maybe there would have been a chance for him. A chance before he'd messed up so bad, he'd never get it back, not with the lies and the pain she was going to associate with him now. Out of nowhere, Nathan's fist connected with Xander's jaw. The pain burst through Xander's face and he stumbled to the side. Shaking his head, Xander grabbed at the throbbing point. What was that for? Thrusting a finger toward Xander's face, Nathan ground out. You're lucky you're my friend, or I would kill you right now. I thought the love was only one way. I was sure Hannah was too smart to fall for you, but... I need some time to think this through. I can't be a part of her heartbreaking, not more than what I've caused already. He turned away, leaving Xander to wonder just how much he was meant to lose. Chapter 21 Hannah the drive had been long and after leaving Xander's ranch, the short drive to Merston had been surprising and not barely long enough to cool down. The sun was up completely by the time she pulled into the parking lot the school map showed was the lot for visitors. She was too early to sign in for the tour, too early for anything. A hotel room wouldn't be on her list until after she'd gone on the tour. Finding a restroom to freshen up was next on her list. Second only to Hannah turned off the engine and leaned back in the driver's seat. Ironically, or maybe not so much anymore, the Culinary Institute of North Dakota was only across the state line from Merston which wasn't too far from Xander's place. She had seen the name of his town by the college's location on the map. The universe had a horrible sense of humor. She wasn't sure she could handle him being that close. Not after he'd lied to her and withheld information that he knew she needed. The whole drive there had been fueled by righteous anger. Anger at the lies, 
Anger at Nate's attitude toward her. Anger at so many people. The miles between Merston and Silver Spoon's ranch weren't enough to get over being mad, but they were enough to give her time to think. She wasn't far from where he was. Hannah had to face reality. Nathan was there with him. Slapping her brother had been the last thing she wanted to do. She wanted to reach out and fall into his arms and weep. Just cry. He hadn't even tried to touch her or tell her he'd missed her. Maybe she really was nothing to him. None of the trails were. Being away from him had made it easy to believe that he was hurting just as badly as they all were, but was maybe too proud to admit it. Too proud to come back and ask for a second chance. Standing in front of him with his features chiseled from granite and his icy expression staring back at her, Hannah realized it didn't matter what she said or did. She was nothing to him. At least Xander had tried to stop her, had tried to apologize. The pain in his eyes had left her feeling understood, even if she was still angry at the lies. Could she forgive him? That was the biggest thing she had to figure out in her heart. If she could forgive him for lying to her, she could move on. Maybe they could try again. The school was so close to his place. Was it weak of her to want to still see him? She couldn't help thinking she had no integrity, if she gave in and saw him. A small thrill of possibility had worked its way into her chest. If she went to school there and she could see Xander, even after the lies, even after he'd left without an explanation, maybe she could have all the possibilities she'd thought she had to give up. Shoving to the back of her mind was the niggling possibility that if she did continue seeing Xander, she'd be able to see Nate more. That chance had sailed. He wasn't interested and she wasn't going to force him. In fact, she'd probably avoid him at the ranch as much as possible. Wait, was she planning on going back already? No, she was tired and over, emotional at having seen Nate and her excitement at going into the school for a tour. She needed to leave it be and not worry about it. She could think about it later. Exhaustion wore at her. Hannah gripped the steering wheel of her economy, sized car and leaned forward, resting her forehead on the vinyl cover. Rolling her head to the side, she rested her cheek on the side of her hand and stared out the window without seeing anything significant. Seeing Xander at Silver Spoon's ranch had been anything but cathartic. There hadn't been closure when he'd left because she hadn't known why he'd left. Drake had explained that something had come up at Xander's home and seeing the size of his place, she could understand why he would have to leave. Seeing him at the ranch and compounding the complex swirl of emotions with the ones which had burst forth from seeing Nate with the anticipation building up to that had been overwhelming. Hannah had a hard time differentiating between the myriad of sensations and assigning which ones to who and what. The build-up at possibly seeing Nate hadn't been good enough preparation to seeing Xander and finding him at the door threw her off. She blinked back re-emerging tears. Dang it. Her anger had kept the moisture at bay after wiping them off at Xander's place. Now, while waiting for the school to open, she had to face everything she was dealing with. Okay, Hannah, what do you really want? The sound of her voice in the confines of the small car had her lift her head and take a deep breath. She never asked herself that, not outright, just kind of in the private of her bedroom. What did she want? Did she want to go to school in North Dakota? Did she want to be that close to Xander? She didn't believe he wanted to hurt her. She wasn't sure what the circumstances had been to take him from her home, but she had a feeling it was Nate. Dang it, how could she love Xander? Because that's what that was. That was the only way seeing him had hurt so much. The clock on her dash finally read nine and she climbed from the car, swinging her soft pink backpack over her right shoulder. She gripped the paper map she'd printed and followed the cement walkways to the admissions office where the tours were supposed to start. She'd signed up for the 9.15 start time. She had to get through that day before she ran right back to Silver Spoon's ranch and begged for both men to love her. Her brother as a brother should and Xander as she wanted him to. Somehow the tour passed in a blur and she wasn't even sure what she had seen. Stainless steel. Lots and lots of stainless steel. All she could think about was Xander and the green of his eyes. The tour guide had called on her and she'd blinked, unable to form a coherent thought. Somehow, she found herself sitting with a counselor whose name tag read Carol. The woman's smile was soft. What did you think of the tour, Hannah? She clicked some keys on the keyboard, the sound soothing in the small office that could have passed for a cubicle except for the floor, two, ceiling walls and the door. 
It was, fast. Hannah smiled at her honesty. I agree. The school isn't large which makes the tour go very fast. But later today, you'll have the opportunity to try out the main kitchen with some of our instructors and ask questions. That should help slow things down some. Carol leaned forward, typing more and splitting her attention between Hannah and the screen. Since your acceptance, your file says you haven't responded with an acceptance or rejection just yet. Is there anything I can do to help you with your decision? Hannah picked at her cuticle, nodding. She had to get her head on straight. Now was the time to ask the questions she had. Actually, I was wondering how feasible it is to work part time while going to school. She needed to pay for her tuition as well as living expenses. She didn't want to get into debt just for school, so paying up front or on a payment plan would be the only way she could afford to attend that school, or any school. Please, don't be impossible. Please. Hannah begged in her heart. She needed things to work out, for all of her dreams. Carol drew her eyebrows together and peered at Hannah. Why do you need a job, Hannah? It isn't encouraged here because of the intensity of the school. She steepled her fingers and angled her head to watch Hannah more closely. I don't have any other way to pay my tuition or boarding. Let alone food or the other things I'll need. Hannah's dreams were slipping away again. Each time she got close something pulled the dream, rug out from under her. There was no way for her to reach out and grab it back. Well, a loan would be a possibility. Carol furrowed her brow and studied the screen. But it says here in the notes of your file that your tuition has been guaranteed as well as a monthly stipend to be assigned to you, upon your acceptance. She smiled soothingly at Hannah. I'm sure you didn't want to get a job for the fun of it. Were you aware of this benefactor? The windfall was startling and took Hannah's breath away. No, actually. I don't even know what you're talking about, to be honest. There had to be some mistake. She hadn't applied for any grants or scholarships. The boon was breathtaking and she didn't want to count on it, in case it had been a mistake. It says here Silver Spoon's Ranch is guaranteeing two plus years of expenses. Carol glanced at Hannah, raising her eyebrows. Sounds like you have a very thoughtful guardian angel. Just when she thought she had things figured, Xander went and added more to her plate to try to wade through. She nodded dumbly, unable to speak or risk her tears to spill from her eyes again. Carol seemed to sense she needed more time. She reached across and handed her a box of tissues sitting on the edge of her desk. Hannah needed the time. But the more time she took, the more her heart was bombarded with reasons to love that man. Chapter 22 Hannah The sun had set well past the mountain range in the distance a solid hour or so before. Clouds were rolling in but didn't promise a storm, just a break from the mounting heat. Hannah couldn't wait to get back to Silver Spoon's ranch. Before she took the overly generous offer of Xander, she had to make sure there weren't any strings attached. Plus, she wanted to see him now that she knew where he was and since she'd cooled off, she was dying to get another chance to talk to Nate. She was supposed to stay at the school for two nights, but instead, she left before she could even try out the kitchens. Yes, culinary school was her dream, but somehow Xander had wedged his way into her plans and dealing with Nate meant that she might be able to wrap up loose ends from the past. Something about the pocked chrome archway with what had to be hundreds of spoons welded into the design made her feel like she could fit right in. He had spoons in his ranch, a strong symbol of the kitchen, and she just wanted to be around food. Maybe she was being obtuse, but she could see the universe wanted them together. She had to stop fighting it. She was willing to stop fighting it. But did he really want her or was the money because he felt bad for lying? Climbing from her car, Hannah took a fuller look at the place Xander called home. And Nate. Nate had lived there for who knew how long. Two important men in her life and she just bumbled out of there, wrapped in her own troubles, focused on the negative rather than in the positive. She'd found Nate and Xander and they were at the same place, not far from where she wanted to go to school. The steps muffled her arrival as she took them one at a time, mesmerized by the distressed look to the railings and the golden, well, polished logs making up the walls of the rest of the home. Whoever had designed the house had an eye for architecture and Adirondack-style settings. The building was old, but well, cared for. Hannah pushed her lips into a flat line. Her nerves were strong enough to make her nauseous, but she swallowed them down. She'd already done the embarrassing stuff. Now, now she just had to see what she could salvage. 
reaching up to knock on the door. Hannah stopped at the sound of a voice behind her. No one's inside. Xander's voice sent small chills up the curve of her back. His tone was bleak yet hopeful at the same time. She smothered her smile and turned, dropping her hand to her side. Xander stood at the base of the steps, looking up at her. He'd tilted his hat back and the light spilling from the front windows cast a warm orange, ish glow across his skin. What are you doing here, Hannah? He sounded tired. Hannah understood tired. She strode the two steps to the top of the stairs and stared down at him, her heart in her throat. She tried to catch her breath while trying to talk herself out of doing anything rash. But she couldn't. Before she gave up and ran away again, she blurted out, You're not supposed to make me weak at the knees from an hour or so away. I don't want to be tied down and then have my heart destroyed. But even my warnings didn't stop me. You lied to me. And I still, eyes full of tears, she glanced to the side then closed her eyes. When she opened them again, Xander stood in front of her, at the same level as her since he was only two steps down. She twisted her lips in consternation. I'm supposed to be stronger than that. I can't help it Anne. I'm so frustrated. Xander searched her face, his green eyes tracing the lines as if he had to memorize the way she looked. What has you so frustrated, love? He reached up, grazing her cheek with his thumb. Holding his gaze with hers, Hannah whispered, falling for you. Even though you lied. I still fell in. Genuine anguish twisted Xander's lips. I'm sorry. I really am. I just. Nathan talked so much about you guys, your family. I'm an only child and all I wanted was to have a family again. He'd said he had one sister left who wasn't married, the last of the cousins, and I planned on marrying you. I didn't care about love. Do you care now? Hannah caught her breath. Was he saying he couldn't love her? Now that he'd met her, he wasn't interested in her or her family. Or what if he said he did care about her? Would it be just for another shot at being in the family? I care. More than you know. He reached out and ran a finger down the curve of her jaw. She shivered at his touch. I. You helped me find my dream and my brother. I owe you for that, but I don't want to be obligated to you. Does that make sense? Hannah couldn't concentrate but only because she couldn't figure out if he cared about her still or if he'd chosen that he wanted something else. I can't pay you back, not right now. Maybe someday. But if I'm going to school in Merston, I can see you here. Maybe, she bit her lip, searching his face. Maybe I could see Nate, too. Sorrow shadowed Xander's gaze and he dropped his hand leaving behind a chill on her skin. I'm sorry. Nathan's gone. He left after you did. Regret slouched his shoulders. He was my friend and I wanted him for my brother, you know? And now he's gone. Hannah sighed, she'd lost him again, but this time didn't feel so empty. I figured he would run. I'm too much of a reminder of what he lost. Xander slowly reached up and gripped her upper biceps. Don't blame yourself. He has too many ghosts he's running from. No. He only has one. Hannah reached up and twisted a chunk of her thick, dark hair around her finger. Why did you promise to pay for my schooling? I don't, you don't have to do that. Because I can. Because I have the means. I want to help you. Even if you don't choose me, I want to be able to do what I can to help make you happy. And no more talk about paying me back. He reached up with both hands and cradled her face in his hands holding her still while he searched her face. I just want you happy. You're so much more than I could have hoped for an I. I just want to give you everything. Hannah studied him, consumed by his gaze and the warmth of his hands. Do you still think there's a chance for us? Xander pulled back a bit, but didn't break the contact of his hands on her. He turned his head to the side, eyeing her like she had said something out of character. I don't know. As far as I'm concerned. There's always a chance for us. Always. But, it comes back to you. Can you look past what I've done? Give me a second chance. You're already forgiven. She leaned forward and grazed her lips softly across his then pulled back, a playful wrinkle to her nose. Oh, wait, since we're starting fresh, we probably shouldn't kiss. I wouldn't want to offend you. Oh, hush, you. I want to be your last kiss. 
Xander stepped closer to Hannah, wrapping a hand around her waist and pulling her close. He angled his head to the side, and their lips connected. The warmth was more like coming home than anything Hannah had ever experienced. After a few moments, Xander pulled back and winked. I'm going to keep you for myself, Hannah. Xander, I'm going to keep you, but I'll share you with the trails once in a while, too. I don't think we're lost anymore. She leaned up on tip, toe, and kissed the top of his forehead and then trailed kisses down to his nose, and then once more on his lips. Hannah finally found like she'd found her way to where she was supposed to be. For the first time since Nate left, she felt like something was going her way and she wasn't alone anymore. Epilogue Nate, even the stars peeking from behind clouds tried irritating Nate. He glared from his seat on the well, worn saddle on his horse at the image of his sister and Alex kissing on the porch of Silver Spoon's ranch. He'd come back to tell Alex that he'd stay, but only if Alex promised never to bring up the Montana trails again. That kind of a promise would be hard to keep with his lips locked on Hannah. Nate had missed her. He barely recognized her. She had the dark locks of their mother and the stubborn streak of their father. He'd barely been able to ride away when he'd returned briefly for Stephanie's wedding. He'd given in during a weak moment. Just the briefest moment and he'd returned home to walk his sister down the aisle. But he'd left at the enormity of what he faced. They'd want to talk to him, quiz him. Tell him how sorry they were. How much they'd missed him. No. What he wouldn't give to go back, see his family, but back there back in Clearwater County, where his Emma had died and was buried wasn't an option. He blinked against the tears struggling to break free and swallowed the lump in his throat. No matter how long he'd been gone, the pain hadn't diminished. Wrapping the reins around his fist, he softly clucked to Missy, his horse, and turned her back to the road. He wasn't going back now. Hannah was moving on. Alex didn't need more drama on his plate. Nate would have to take the presence of his sister as a sign that it was time to leave. He couldn't even tell her he was sorry. Just one more thing to add to his list of regrets. One more thing on a list longer than he could track. He would never be settled and the sooner the Montana Trails accepted that, the sooner they would all be better off. Hannah, what do you think of this one? Hannah leaned across the island in Xander's massive kitchen and offered him a taste of a creamy sauce on a wooden spoon. She waited for him to lick the spoon and watched for his expression. Dropping back from tip, toe, she held the spoon aloft. Well? Xander took his time, his expression thoughtful. I like it, but I think there's too much, he looked at her and then guessed, garlic? He grinned when she tossed the loose hand towel sitting beside her on the counter at him. I don't know. It's delicious. Don't change anything. Oh, you. Hannah sighed stirring the creamy sauce and adding petite shrimp with a gentle folding motion. Thank you. For what? Xander reached across and plucked a piece of baguette bread from the basket beside the cutting board. I should be thanking you. I'm getting fat with all the amazing food you treat me to. Hannah turned the stove down and rounded the end of the counter. She waited for him to look at her. You know what I mean. Do I? Xander teased her playfully. They'd been dating for three months and he'd been a gentleman from the very beginning. Thank you. She leaned forward and kissed him full on the lips, a blush heating her cheeks. She still wasn't used to that. Before she could turn back to dinner, Xander stopped her by grabbing her fingers in his. Hey, his voice turned huskier than normal and she turned back to meet his gaze. He reached up and tucked her hair behind her ear. Can I give you something and not freak you out? Those aren't the words to start with. She laughed and nodded. Sure. Hopefully, it's that whisk I was hinting about the other day. She winked at his deadpan expression. He waited until she sobered and then he pulled out a small box. This. I'm not going to propose until you graduate from school, but I want to make sure you know that my intentions are forever. Hannah's breath caught and she didn't open the box. She just stared at it, sitting unassuming in his palm. She blinked back tears and whispered, What if I don't want you to wait? Disbelief dropped his lips open and he leaned forward. Wait, what? I'm not saying I want you to propose tonight, but I don't need you to wait that long. She leaned forward to kiss him on the lips again, this time without the blush. I know you're not going anywhere, Xander. I know I'm safe with you. That's what my thank you was for. I love you. 
She pulled back and studied him. He was hers. She didn't need anything else. She'd found the man she didn't know she was searching for. Lost hearts healed a lot faster when they were found.